Good evening, this is the Carver Finance Committee for Monday, February 5th, 2024. We're being recorded by Area 58, Community Access Media. Please all rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and to the liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. First on our agenda this evening is the Town Administrator and Finance Director updates. Uh, Mr. Fennessy, Mr. Samia. Yeah. So first I'd like to introduce uh, George Samia for those people who may not have met him. Uh, I'm sure the, the committee here has met him, but uh, for the people outside of the committee that were watching on TV, uh, his uh, Interim Finance Director. Uh, and he'll be here until we hire a full-time finance director. That process is uh, going on right now, so so welcome. Um, so the picture that we're going to paint tonight is not a pretty one, not a rosy one, um, but it's not as bleak as we first thought it may be. Um, through collaboration with the schools, finance committee, department heads, and the select board, uh, this is a problem that I think we can all pull together and fix. So generally, the revenues in town have been somewhat stagnant. And like in all areas post-COVID, the, uh, the inflation has eaten away at some of the revenues that we have. For next year's budget, which is FY25, I set out to have the department submit to me a level services budget, which they did. That means they were to prepare the budget and not to, to the point where they keep all services that they give the townspeople now and see where that comes out to. Um, after the budgets were, were submitted by the departments, uh, we saw that there was a deficit that needed to be closed. That deficit, and, and George Samia will discuss that a little more in detail, uh, is something that we're, we're obviously working on now and working with the Finance Committee. The budgets went back to the department heads with the goal of seeing where they can cut the least amount of impact to the townspeople and they are in the process of doing that now. Over the next few weeks, we'll take a hard look at areas that may need to have cuts to balance the budget. Our interim finance director is here to give a more detailed look at the proposed budget and the impact it has to town services, including the school district. It is Mr. Samia and my goal to work closely with the finance committee and, and the uh, select board and look for solutions that we can present a balanced budget at town meeting. Part of that will be through recommendations of the FinCom, as FinCom looks deeply into these departments at these hearings or meetings. So I'd like to turn this over to George at this time. Maybe you can speak into the mic. For sure. The sure. Um, I think um, it, it, this might be a redundancy for those who had, had watched um, uh, a couple of weeks back on a Saturday when we had our first uh, uh, joint meeting with everyone. So I'll, I'll come out and say the, the, the same thing I said then. Um, I'm currently working in, in three towns, and I, I live in a, a fourth and, um, and, and have knowledge of several others. And the one thing that I'll, I'll come away from is that this seems to be a universal uh, problem. Um, uh, another town that I'm working in right now is, 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 is ratcheted up to about 2.1, 2.2 million that they're currently in the um, in the whole, I guess I want to come out by saying I don't think just by looking at what you folks have done that this is anything inherent to, to like something that Carver did as opposed to I think a place that we are in, in history right at the moment where uh, everybody's kind of under the gun. Um, I only just uh, finished off with a, a, a seemingly wealthy town um, that it has more than enough money, uh, and they even had to go back and do a, an $800,000 cut to make their, their budget work. Um, so that, that's, we'll start off with that. Um, on Saturday, when we were in here two weeks ago, um, I think we were currently, we had made a, we were in or around like 1.3 negative. Today we're about 1.175 negative. So I'll repeat again what I had said before, that, that these numbers are um, liquid and they, they continue to evolve as we speak. 
I think the, the one thing that Kaver does slightly different than, than several of the other towns that I'm, I'm in, you, you folks have a very early um, annual town meeting which doesn't um, afford you the, the, the time to wait for some of the things to, uh, to solidify. Um, I, I, oftentimes the state aid that we talk about, uh, they're supposed to have their stuff all submitted and in by, by May and, and it's been more than a, a number of years that it, it's June, July, August by the time they actually get where they're supposed to be. So again, these numbers will continue to evolve. Since last uh, Saturday, or two Saturdays ago, or whatever, um, we were treated to the governor's budget, which ultimately took us down approximately 120,000 from what we had predicted when we came out of the gate. So that there was a couple of dollars. During that meeting, there were a couple of things that we found on the, uh, the sheets we were working with that uh, were double counted because of the, you know, the way things were. Those have been repaired since. And um, since that time, we have a, um, uh, we've had a, an update to the, um, I think it was Bob and I, on the water, which uh, I, at the time, wasn't aware. I thought they were completely self-funded, but you you've actually have been subsidizing it for, for a number of years. And that actually changed it. But I, I did, we did find out that there was a, um, uh, you've been subsidizing it usually with free cash to pay off their debt service with. So it was sort of an up down type thing. It, it went up a little bit. Then, then when we put the, the free cash to cover that, it, it went back down. So currently we're at about 1.175. And again, those numbers will probably change, hopefully to the better. Um, but I don't know, under, under the circumstances, I, I don't hold out a lot of hope for that. And I think the, the better part of it is gonna have to be done internally as opposed to waiting for something from the outside to, to take place at this point. Pat? Oh, just a couple of a couple of questions. I've not had the pleasure of meeting you, George. I'm Pat Mahar. I'm uh, many years um, school business manager and assistant superintendent here in Carver. Uh -huh. So I've been around the block on many of these uh, budget cycles. So two things that, um, and I had to miss Saturday because I was away, and. Um, has um, FY23 been closed yet, and is there anything left in there? And has free cash been certified yet? Free cash is currently in at the, the Bureau of Accounts. They, they have to go through a gyration. It was, it right. was submitted, I think, what was it, two weeks ago or, uh, by, by Eric. <coughs> Excuse me, I didn't mean to call. Um, about a week and a half ago, yeah. that that was put that was put in. It usually takes the bureau, I don't know, maybe maybe a week to two weeks yeah. to get. So I'm I'm assuming that they'll have something. We should have something in a couple of uh, maybe maybe within a week or so. You know, if they get off their haunches <laughs> over there and, and and do what they're supposed to. So yeah, um, we have a ballpark number on that. About one point six. So our free cash did go up a little, and I'm being a little conservative on that just in case that the number that was put in gets adjusted by the state. I don't want to start a, a, a thing, but I think, I think you're going to be able to count on about 1.6. Does that include the 400,000 that was brought forward from last year? 400, I'm not sure what you, you mean by that. Um, the, you, you, yeah, we brought, there was 400,000 unspent that we had set oh, okay. aside for, huh? Yeah, it's for capital. So it's not for capital. Capital. Yeah, but I thought that would go into this year's free cash. No, that's the no, that, capital. That was uh, lined up for capital for this year. And it's in, still in capital. Well, hopefully. <laughs> for, your, for, for, the, for the sake of what, what I think he's, he's saying is this, your free cash is a derivative of what is known as the, um, uh, unreserved un, uh, uh, fund balance. 
And what happens is once you close out at the end of the year, okay, which was done by the previous town accountant, if you have extra money in revenues that comes in or you didn't spend, it, it, it's a, it, it nets itself out and you get this number, then the state does a gyration with it where they say, okay, you've got X amount in here, but you still got outstanding receivables of real estate, personal property. Oh, by the way, you went in the hole over here. This isn't done. And then they begin subtracting things off. And then they finally say, well, I'm not making up a number here. You started out with $5 million uh, um, in your unreserved fund balance. Once we've taken this out, here is your free cash free of obligation, okay? It's not free cash or anything, it just means that you, you that this is what we're saying you can spend out of that free of any, it, it hasn't been uh, right. put towards something. So it, it, if there was something that was left in the free cash last year that you didn't use, that usually becomes next year's, it, it rolls into the, into, the, um, into the thing for the next year or whatever. So even and, though we asked for it to specifically go towards capital, that's not what happened? Well, if, if it went into an account, okay, for capital, then it would not have been rolled because okay. that would not be free of obligation. You've got it in a reserve account to be used for capital, so it is not a free cash. It's, it, it's, it's something that's already been obligated. I don't even do that. Sue said she was going to reserve this for capital. Yeah. My understanding was. Yeah. If I may, also the town meeting warrant had it okay. to be reserved, it you know, does, for right? stabilization of. Okay. In in the it's kind of strange because in the early drafts, it had it had the words capital outlay, and then it morphed into other words, but it's still the intent was still to put it into capital. Mm -hmm. That I think it's four hundred ninety thousand. Wasn't it? I, I, th that's that's the number that's been put around, and I'm still <clears throat> to this moment we're still searching for You're where yeah. that went to, yeah, you or whatever, here. Just or whatever. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out where it is. Um, but that would be um, there was something I was just going to mention to you on there. Um, I don't know. I guess uh, I'll, I'll keep going with uh, with uh, uh, we'll, uh, you had another question or something. Uh, and well, the, f the free cash and, and anything left over from closeout of FY23. Well, then that, if, if there was a closeout, meaning that well, the, they would have the, taken the money and put it into that unreserved fund yeah. balance because it was but, there, it would become the free cash. But, but do, we even, do we even know that? Has the system been updated so that we know what even happened at the end of FY23? Right now, the, the, the folks that are still working in that area are on it. They have put in the balance sheet, and we know a little bit about, like, like we've, we've, we've submitted our recap sheet, okay? Yeah. Things like that. There are stuff that, that there, or there is, has been stuff that was done. There's still a lot of uh, confusion out there as to yeah. what's taken place. So, but if, if, the na if the main question that, that you're asking, and I think what it might be, is the free cash is a little better this year than I mean, little little more than it was the year before, and I think the main driver in that was under your estimated receipts, local receipts. I think it was your uh, there was uh, your um, interest income. Okay, uh, prior years, and I've seen this in probably four different towns. Prior years, you were earning something like forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. At the end of twenty-three, you earned five hundred thousand as a result of the uh, the increase from 0.5 percent that they were getting in the in the banks to now six percent, uh, whatever or something. Yeah. That effect. But I know some one one of the things that just hangs over my head is. How do we have the ability to do FY25 when we don't really know what happened in closeout FY23 and we don't know where we are in FY24? How do we have confidence going into FY25? Most of when you're working with a recap sheet. And that's not directed at you guys. No, 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 I, I, I understand. A, that's just a comment. <clears throat> that's, that's just. Most of, of what we're doing for this budget, the 25 budget, is predicated on 
things that we can get our hands around, okay? For example, if you look in the budget summary, okay, we can see from previous recaps what was it that, that we earned and what was it that we took in in prior years. We closed out 23's recap. It's an estimate. I mean, it, it, it's, it's been submitted. We've predicated our uh, tax rate on it, okay? And most of it, I'm going to say, was done by the time I got to it. It was about 95% done. And I think when Eric, uh, uh, there's another group in here. I, I'm using the guy's first name. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Eric Crenshaw, who's, a, who's been working on the balance sheet and actually helping out with uh, checking other. To do that balance sheet, they had to go back through and not be like, well, we're just going to take somebody's word for it. I got to verify these mm -hmm. numbers, which is why it's taken them as long as it has, along with the fact that they're, of course, part time, just like myself, they, they don't have the full time. But they've gone backwards and, um, and looked at the, uh, at the numbers and had to re verify everything. So the idea that they put in that balance sheet, okay. They have already checked over and actually made some adjusting entries to make things clean again to get in. So I think closing of 23, you're, you're good. Now, what you're also saying is, is the, um, as you're going through 24, okay, yeah. there's a lot of things we can't get up and running as a result of your new um, um, system out there, okay? And, that system at, at the moment, uh, now there's another thing that they, they came in and worked on um, over the last several weeks. There was a bog down in getting some of the receipts in. And I think, in, at least in an update that we had last um, Tuesday from them, they met with the treasurer's office and found a way around some of these things that were bogging them down. And I, if I'm not mistaken, they were then able to, they, as of two weeks ago, they had a, about half of August in. Then suddenly, they're up to almost the end of September now. So I think that they're starting to be able to get beyond some of these things with the help of the, the outside company. Good, thank you. All right. So, all right, well, I, that wasn't the intent of tonight's meeting. I don't want to get into this kind oh, of Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. No, you know. no I, I don't want to get into that because yeah. we don't have the year ends. We don't, we, and I got to agree with Pat. We've been doing this a long time, yep. and, and to prepare a budget every year in the past, we got, in this case, it would be FY23 proposed, FY23 actual, mm -hmm. which would be year-end, mm -hmm. then it would be FY24 proposed, FY24 year-to-date, and here we come in with FY25. That's the way that we present and, and construct the budget, right. assuming that you know, the mice right. have, haven't gotten into the attic and, and haven't eaten through all the software programs, right. and, and we can actually find stuff. And the problem we're having now is that nobody can find anything. Part of it is because of this ridiculous new program, VEDA, that's killing us. It ought to be named Darth VEDA, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and and uh, this was done by, you know, an individual who, uh, there was no oversight, there was no committee that was formed to look into this thing. They should have had some IT people and some other accountants into it and shoulda, woulda, coulda, and the water's already over the bridge and the horse is gone, let's not lock the barn. So, now we have to come back, like you just said, and we're constructing. To sit back in a January, I'm sorry, a February 5th FinCon meeting and say we're almost to the end of September in mm. our receipts, mm. Is, is, is concerning mm -hmm. to this entire committee. Mm -hmm. And I get phone calls all day long mm -hmm. on this of, you know, what are we going to do? And, and God bless Bob and, and you. Mm -hmm. You guys have worked and I get it. No one's trying to throw you under the bus mm -hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I don't think either one of you saw it. No, you never saw it coming uh, because, you know, this is just where we're at right now. Yeah. Uh, but I find this, this budget concerning. I find this shortfall concerning. The fact that other cities and towns uh, are having the problem is, is wonderful. Um, you know, last year we were sitting comfortably and Hingham was $8 million short and they got a lot more money than we do. Uh, but we're not Hingham. 
Mm -hmm. And we're not Cambridge and we're not Brockton and I see Carol grinning, we're not Bridgewater. <laughs> so I'm assuming that Bridgewater is not without their problems. Mm -hmm. So every town is, there's no doubt. So now this is where we all come together and find out how much we can, we can scrimp and save and cut and freeze new hires and you know, we do, because the last thing anybody, anybody, anybody wants with a questionable budget, not questionable from your standpoint of professionalism by any means, um, but the last thing any of us want is to see one person laid off hmm. when we haven't explored every other place we can cut some, some funding. Mm -hmm. And then, God forbid, at the fall town meeting, we find that we didn't really need to lay that person mm -hmm. off, mm -hmm. and then it makes it look even worse. Mm -hmm. And this is, I just don't want that. Yeah. Uh, so we're trying to do the very best we can, and we're trying to tap dance as much as we can, and still be truthful to everybody. Mm -hmm. This, this um, 1.175 million is a lot better than the 1.4 that was mm -hmm. original. Uh, and then the school takes their piece out of that. So, you know, maybe the sky hasn't fallen completely into the basement, but it's, you know, it's cloudy out. Mm. So I, I feel awful because I'm not, don't feel comfortable voting for anybody mm. yet, looking at these schedules, because I don't know, Alan's right, what we spent for, at all for FY23. I don't know what we spent at all for FY24. Mm. And it's fine to see what we voted on at the budget last mm. year at the town meeting, but how do we know we're even close to that? Yeah. And when I'm looking at this, I can already see the $25,000 grant program sitting in the finance committee, which would change the, the amount everyone's going to get also. That should be above the line. Yeah, it should. And then we should know after that how much the school in the town gets. A $25,000 $25, grant. $25,000 in the grant program was always above the shared costs. Okay. It was not part of the town budget because this was a motion that was made at town meeting and it came out of a citizen's petition. Mm -hmm. So this was always above the line. Okay. So it was always above think, the split. I think it would help. And, and it, it never was in our budget. They did it last year and for they the first brought it time. up and said this doesn't belong That's here, right. but it, it obviously went through like that. Okay. Um, but I think we're missing, like, and I don't want to make anyone do more work, but we used to get this nice schedule that actually laid out what's our projected revenue what's above the split and then we had a percentage to show what we would both get town and school for the for the projected revenue i've done something to that effect okay, okay. where it, it, that's actually in your budget summary okay yes, and what there's for example if you were looking at your tax levy mm -hmm. okay that's going to be fairly engraved in stone but if you go to the the, the page mark tax levy uh, or there's a they go to budget summary and then there's a you go in a little bit on tax levy there is a uh you can see for the last since the since the year uh 2019 these are your calculations of of tax levy coming right off of of, of your uh, recap sheets so we have that placed in now the only there are two other pieces to that tax levy that you you would need one would be your new growth which is the next page okay and we have six years of your new growth which averages out to about four hundred and fourteen thousand dollars per year okay not taking into account that extra solar piece that was a one-time adjustment last year that came in so is that uh, why last year's up almost two hundred thousand yeah there's a if you note there's something right in there it says um uh, amended new growth um 747 402 okay mm -hmm. that in 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 accordance to the uh board of assessors is a one time i mean there might be some others but it's not going to be that that large but you'll note if you look there you don't see amended new growth in there for for any of the other years maybe there was some a little bit further up so usually the, your assessors will not receive the information on the new growth until really to the end of the fiscal year so that's up and down until they actually get it but this is probably your best college guess at the moment to say okay so it's about 414 <coughs> is what we've been getting every year the final piece to your debt service comes to be the um, is is how much have you um, uh, debt exclusion? That's a pretty much engraved in stone piece because those come right off of treasurer's um, uh, schedules. 
and that next page actually shows you what you had as a debt exclusion from last year, which was 1024, and this year it's 1,131, and that's predicated on on actual schedules that you're paying on bond issuances right now. Okay, whether the so that at least for your debt for your um, tax levy, you that's your best guess right now is, is, is for what we are using at this particular moment in time. Why does it say school construction Fairhaven? Oh, because I use this, I use the title that uh, it should be school construction for Carver or whatever. It, it, it's, I just, I've been using some, uh, um, what you want to call, um, like old templates. Uh, templates, yeah. And I sometimes I've forgotten to change the, the title on it. Listen, we'd be happy to give that to Fair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, you wouldn't right now because they're in worse shape than you are at the, at the moment. Um, your state aid. Because um, sure? this even has a date of 2004, so we're sure that this is the Carver number? It's the Carver number because I actually took the numbers right off the, the sheet. I just didn't change the title on it. Okay. Um, your state aid, if you, take, if you go to the one marked state aid, you have um, actual state aid numbers for the last, um, uh, all the way up, in, um, up to 24 from 19. And this is... This is what you've been getting, okay, from the state. It's right off the cherry sheet. You can check those on your own. So what we did, uh, um, what I did was I created a projection, okay, saying, well, this is what we got in, in, in 24, and this is what they've been trending up, and that seemed to work, you know, it, when you in, in the absence of any state aid number. But what I also did is since the, since the first time we met, I added another page to it, um, which is the preliminary cherry sheet. This is, this is what you're seeing right now, this third page that comes in from the state of Massachusetts. And this is the way it looks uh, when it comes in. Now, you'll note there's the governor's budget right there, and that's where I'm pulling it. Now, obviously, you've got House budget proposal, you've got Senate budget proposal, you've got the conference committee, and as those, those fill in, and that comes usually like molasses rolling uphill, if, as that comes in, I, I take the, the, that same sheet and I'll average them until we get to the final number that we're gonna get. So once the house budget comes in, I'll average it out and say, okay, if uh, the first one was a million, the second one was two million, so we'll call it a million five for now, okay? The third one comes in at this, then we'll, we'll average that out all the way up until the end. So you've got something to work with until the, the, the end. The local receipts, um, which is, um, is very much similar to, the, to what we've done, you have the actuals for 19 all the way up through 23, and then the estimate that was used last year on the recap sheet, okay? On my first um, incarnation of this, I took the number that which was that came in at three million nine ten. Okay, was what you closed out last year, or that was what came in into the the sheet. Last few times that we've been doing this, I utilized um, from again another trend analysis showing this is what might come up, but it was coming up pretty high at that particular point. And so what I ended up doing is taking an average of the last five years of what we got for free cash. But I think I told you the first night we got here that that particular number would probably be tweaked a little bit better than that because, uh, you know, I, I tend to be conservative on it. So ultimately, I just adjusted it up because we're in such a, a bad, but I, I took there's one last thing, if you see local receipts projection, I took the actual receipts for FY23, okay. which was 3,910,000. I subtracted the miscellaneous non-reoccurring, because you're not gonna get that yeah. again every year. There's a, these are one-time payments. There was a bunch of things in there, not including we had to put in there, which was placed in there last year. For example, $40,000 worth of um, um, what was it, uh, opiate, um, opioid uh, settlement, which according to the state had to be closed out. You'll have to make a, uh, to get that back to the chief, 
he'll have to go back to a town meeting. But those are the types of things that fall in <clears throat> miscellaneous, non-reoccurring. So I subtracted that out, and it brought you down to 3594000 And then I did a, the projection was we, it was going up about $262,000 a year. So I added that back in. So I've got now a projection of about 3857 And again, none of that should be on one person to do if, if folks feel as though, you know, that, that's the, I think that that's probably a, a decent number that you're not going to get yourself. Because remember, if you go too far, the state won't allow you to set the tax rate. You have to come back to a, a, a special town meeting and cut. If you go too far, you'll have a deficit on your hands. So you want to you be, you want to make sure that you're not operating on the edge with that at the moment. So can I just ask a question? Uh -huh. All right, so in the licenses and permits, it looks like in 21, it jumped way up to a million four. Mm -hmm. So then we go to 22, and it's back down to probably yeah. what it should have been the prior years, like 180, right. 140. Right. It's going up, we think, in 23, but then we're dropping it back down to 20 in 24. To based on FY twenty two, on twenty four, you guys used when I got here. It was already sort of a done deal. Okay. They, there were numbers given out that you used at a at a at a at the annual town meeting to balance the budget. Now those numbers can change even after because it's not those those numbers aren't voted on. But I stuck to I think within. I think it was like sixty to eighty thousand dollars of what you folks had been using all through the year. Okay, now as you can see, based on what you actually took in, which was three point nine, and what you guys were predicting last year was three point one. Okay, you talking? It was a substantial difference between what you actually took in, and I don't think <coughs> at the time anybody would have would have guessed that you were going to probably pull down as much money in the um, in the interest income okay. as as you did and and there was a few other things that were up and I think that was the big big mother load was that was that in it and it pushed it up plus plus you also had that 316,000 yeah. of those un uh, un um, non reoccurring uh, numbers that, are, that that were coming in so so that that column at the bottom looks like a variance to me. Is that just going like prior year to this year, prior year to this year? Yeah, the yeah. It, it's just showing what, what, what you know, that this was the increase every year going up. Okay. So predicated on that, okay, if you said, well, what was the average increase for the last four years? If you flip to the next page, okay, it was averaging about $262,000 a year. So I took that 262,000 and just extrapolated out on it, okay? And again, you have to be, as I, I mentioned to you, I, I know you, you probably weren't at that meeting that, that we we're at the first time, is none of these should be looked at as, well, this is, you know, uh, God's word chiseled into stone. It, it, it's, it's, it's a tool to be used by everyone to say, all right, you know, could we tweak this a little bit if you want? Yeah. And um, so right now, taking that 262 uh, number that we're going up, that's where I came up with your local receipts, as it stands right now. How does that investment income fluctuate from 23 to 24? It goes from 45,000 to 579,000. Because the rates went up. The rates, the the rates, rates went up. And, and, is that what you were talking about? Earlier? Yeah. Okay. And oddly enough, um, I, I hate to keep bringing up other towns because, uh, but I think Fairhaven uh, is, is is very similar to you in that the budget-wise, they've got about the same size budget, and they have an, a lot of the same same things. And oddly enough, it was the same exact trend over there. It was like about forty-five to fifty thousand dollars the year before, and then suddenly they were up in the five hundreds. And I think it's, uh, and I do know um, from my Foxborough period, the um, you were getting rates, or the treasurer was getting rates only two years ago, because I'd have to calculate them at the end of the year, uh, point uh, point oh oh two or whatever, point one one three, you know, and you know on the various bank accounts. So you'd sit there all afternoon looking what you made for the year and. 
you might have had you know millions of dollars in the bank and came out with forty thousand dollars at the end of the year now all of a sudden you're getting whole numbers on there and it it's in it and it blew through the roof, which is is good if, if you're on the end and you're an, an investor. Maybe not so good if you're trying to get a, a loan for a house. So that's that's pretty much where you're. Um, so can I, I one more question? Can I uh -huh. ask one more question? Mm -hmm. All right. So before we start to go into the budget season to make votes, we're used to getting sort of like a big sheet of a bigger sheet of paper than this, and it would have you know very similar columns, but of course FY23 and actual for FY24 would be on there. And then we would use that for the whole month and we would vote vote on it and say okay okay and then make sure we balance is this the sheet you expect us to balance to for the whole month if you're looking for the actual things that people have already spent on the budget for 24 starting in january here's the problem you're going to have in fact None of it's in VEDA yet. But uh -huh. can't somebody get it into no, no, Excel? Uh -huh. No, no, the, those numbers are in, okay, because at least on the expense side, they've been able to keep that up. The problem that you're going to have, okay, and is, is very much like what we just experienced this afternoon. However, and I, and I don't know who was here at the time and how it all happened, okay, so I'm not pointing okay. at it. However it took place, okay, when this system was put in, certain things were done that probably should have been fixed at the time that the system was being put up. So one of the things you're, you're having a problem with, somebody walked in today, I won't even mention, and it's the same thing that I think you and I and, and John and, and, um, and Dan were talking about earlier. You go to that budget and it gets printed, okay, and suddenly it's littered with all these other things that are on top of the budget you got. Hence, if somebody brought forward some encumbrances last year, they're melded in to the lines rather than being segregated out. Those numbers are all melded together. Articles are littered in to the to the um, the budget itself. So could somebody run a VEDA report for you to work with? Yes, it's going to be a confusing report because there's stuff in there. It, it, it took me just to get this particular to get this particular budget summary done to add last year. It took me a couple of days going through and taking out things that did not belong in there to get back to the original thing that you voted. So I guess, I'm with Beth. I don't know how we can, how we can vote on department budgets. Do we just, you know, am I going to have Cara, the town clerk, come up and say, listen, Cara, I'm sorry, cut 5%, and that's all there is to it, and we don't really care whether you can or you can't, and, and then I can tell the same thing to, to EMS and the same thing to emergency management and uh, uh, the library, Carol will probably drop a stitch. Um, this, we need to have confidence in these numbers and what I've heard a lot of time, correct me if I'm hearing something wrong, both of you two, because you're smarter than I'll ever be. But I'm hearing a lot of, I extrapolated, I took averages, mm -hmm. I took, looked back three years and took the average that we spent every year and I brought that mm -hmm. forward and I haven't heard, we took the year end 2023 <coughs> and found out what we had left over in turnbacks and used those numbers to see where we are actually at in 24 because we really don't know yet because we can't get a cohesive report out of VEDA that doesn't look like spaghetti. Mm -hmm. We need to be a rocket scientist to figure out what the report says. None of us have your, well, Beth has your pedigree. None of us do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think you did a good job. I think you did a great no, no, job. No, 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 I, and I, I think you worked I, your, your tail off to get this yeah. far. Right. But This is actually the best revenue detail I've seen. <laughs> it's not on our nice, like, long spreadsheet. But, but we're trying to get to where we have confidence right. in these numbers. Right. And, we, and we're not getting any backup information right. to, that's been, you know, 
been proven to be the case, and it's not your fault. I know we closed the year in soft right, mm. and, and for some reason July 1st came and we locked soft right and we started with this. And I don't know why we didn't run them side by side, but that's another discussion. Right. So I, I, mean, I, I, don't know what, I don't know what this committee expects us to do as a, as a committee. I don't know what department heads expect us to do as a FinCom. Mm. You know, I, I really am not comfortable sitting trying to beat somebody's budget up because this town works incredibly hard together when they come up with their budget. And, and you may have seen some of it on Saturday at the joint meeting. Yes. We, you know, it, it would be nothing. I, I, I know for a fact there's, there's emergency management's willing to cut some money out of their budget tonight. He's not crazy about it, but it will help the town. Mm. Carol Julius said mm -hmm. we'll cut some money out of the library. Do you think she likes it? She doesn't, but it will help the town. Mm -hmm. So this is what, and I would hate to have us come to a September town meeting or an October town meeting about the middle of October is the deadline, and, and find that, you know, mm -hmm. geez, we really didn't have to do all this cutting because we found these errors that aren't your fault that, have, mm -hmm. that were entered into the system. These are numbers being brought forward. Yeah. And, and I, for one, occasionally get dyslexic and backwards mm -hmm. enter numbers and then try to figure out why I can't find the, mm -hmm. the number to balance out and I go dig through it. When you're doing it all day long, there's a lot going on in the town. I get it. Mm -hmm. But we're, this is February 5th. Mm -hmm. We've got till March 9th. Mm -hmm. Or the chairman of the select board and the select board, hint, hint, <laughs> is going to have to make a vote to change the date of town meeting. Because we cannot have this gun to our head this year like we had it last year, and this is far worse than last year, in my estimation. Pat, we we have a we have a town meeting coming up, April 9th. and we 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 have to provide a level of uh, comfort. Hmm and a level of confidence to the people at town meeting that are going to vote. Mm -hmm. And I have no, I, I have no th concept that that can even happen because we're not going to be able to do that. We're not going to be able to do it at all. Mm -hmm. And that puts everybody in a, in a bad and an awkward position. We can't be up front at town meeting, at least I, I won't, and I don't think anybody else will, is going to say, yes, that's a good budget, this, that's a good, uh, those, those revenue projections are fine, this and everything else. And we have to do that. The last, the last two years were not great. No. Oh. As, as, and, mm. and, and, I, and I said a long time ago, you think the last two years are bad, wait till you see this one. Mm. And, um, and again, I'm, I'm not criticizing you guys. But no, George came but, in and got thrown under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there, there has to be a level of comfort and confidence that we, not, not only the finance committee, but the administration, and the select board has to portray to several hundred people at town meeting, and I don't see that happening. I don't see it happening at all. I don't think it's possible. Well, if I may, um, so behind the scenes, there's a lot of work being done. We brought in experts to fix these situations that we found um, from a prior uh, group that started, when you start with an, a, a budget that is all messed up, to be blunt. And you have to work through fixing that before you can even get into the next year. All those problems are being addressed right now. It's, it's you know, we can't sit on our hands and say, oh well, we'll never have this done by, yeah. by 
by April 9th or March, whatever March, March 9th. 9th. So, so the so we have we have these specialists come in. One one's a specialist in in uh, Veda and not not a specialist of Veda, but familiar with v Veda, and also an accountant coming in, and they're trying to get this information put in along with George uh, to get these things so we know what the status is, what, exactly what you're asking for, is where are we the end of 23? Where are we right now, six months into 24? Yeah. And, and c use those as a guideline on where they should be in 25. So we're getting there. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, the problems that are coming up, uh, problems that are not fixed with a click-click, it takes a lot of work to put it together, put it back to where it was in 22, to 23, to 24, and get them all lined up. So, so and it says frustrating to you, if you think it's frustrating to you, on this end of the table, it's 10 times more frustrating. Of course it is. So it's something, you know. We, I'll uh, give you a quick uh, example, which um, uh, I'm filling out um, a report for uh, Hilltop Securities right now. It's called your end of the year annual disclosure that you have for, for bond issuances. Um, I've done probably a hundred of these things. Uh, they're, 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 you know, they're fairly straightforward. You pull your, your numbers off of them. I come up to look at our state um, aid from uh, fiscal uh, 24. And I'm, I'm now the state aid is your cherry sheet. And there's activity in the account, and, and, it, and it says we're supposed to get $10 million worth of, I'm, I'm rounding the number, $10 million worth of um, uh, Chapter 70 money, okay? But there's $12 million in the, um, in the account. I spent like, I don't know, two or three hours trying to get that thing to come out. I couldn't unwind it, okay? Um, later on, about four or five days later, I, I, I catch up with the the other two, and um, and I said, Jesus, you know, I said I must be really rusty. They said, No, we spent the whole weekend on on doing this one thing. There was some journal entry or something that was stuck in there that 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 uh, they had to back it all out and, and, and take. So they so the two of them spent the whole weekend on the on the telephone back and forth <coughs> trying to unwind this just so they could get the balance sheet in. So did somebody book a journal entry incorrectly? Well, at least that's. Or did we the, load bad info into it? I guess I'm just wondering if this. Like a in this particular action? case, it was a journal entry, and and and, and something was. I, I I believe maybe even LinkedIn properly. I'm I'm not sure. Um, so it's um you know but what uh, could have just been fed wrong. Right. When we started up the right. system, or did right. we actually put something right. in wrong later on? Exactly. Way. So again, I don't want to lay that blame, but I'm, it, it, it's, I think what Bob is, is trying to say is, it sounds like, well, you, all you need to do is push a button, but now that was just one particular incident, okay? But it took a while. Now, I, even this afternoon, we spent some time trying to decipher, and I think we came down to it, a, a, a particular department, and person is fairly confident they've been there for a long time and they know where it but they, they well wait a minute I didn't know I thought this had to be over here because the, 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 there's a whole set of numbers that came in from someplace else or whatever and um, so I've been booking them over here and then there's other stuff that's in on top of it which was like articles and things that, that, that were there it's all all, all man mangled together so it's it's uh, it's 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 going to take some unwinding to do, okay, but so, I, but, you, but yeah. given that very information, mm -hmm. then I'll go back to yeah. my question to Bob. What is it you want us to do with the people who have spent their time here tonight from departments? What, okay. are, what are we supposed so to do? So here's my answer. Obviously, we need to make cuts. So I think I think I'm going to ask you guys to do a deep dive into each department to see, ask them where they think cuts can be made maybe have recommendations as we're going through this. You don't have to vote on it tonight. We can. You can, you can go through and, and meet with these departments and, and get, get a sense on what's important to them and what they feel they need to hold on to. And as a finance committee, and I served on my finance committee in my town, um, we would do that and, and then make a recommendation because that's ultimately what you end up doing. 
is making a recommendation to the town. So, so that's what I would suggest, not to, not to stop this process. Oh, I had no intention to stop so, this so process. So to start bringing them up here and, and talk up. to them and, and see where, where they're at. So I just think, like, seeing as the position that we're in this year, I would hope that we have no new positions added, no new FTEs. No new eyes. Yeah, no. The, no additional you know, hours at this point on. Yep. So we're, we're looking at, like, a, a hard line right now. So we get a handle on everything and see where we're at. Yeah, yeah there's a hiring freeze. Um, there was one. It looked like in the in the budget a promotion uh, from uh, part time to full time. That's out the window. Uh, and conversely, we're hoping there'll be no layoffs. Pat, I think that you know, I've been through a lot of budget cycles over my many years, and. There were some good ones and there were some bad ones. But I've never been through one where there was such a low level of confidence in, in, what's, in what's going on. I, I look at, um, you know, if we got to do something like by March 9th, I mean, that, that's impossible. I look at town meeting as being impossible. I think I that we can't have a town meeting in April. It's going to be embarrassing. And I don't want to go in front of the good people of Carver and saying, here's where we think we are. That, that, that is, that's not a place to be. Thinking where we are and where we are can be world, worlds apart. And then you would Okay, well, we can, we can fix it in the fall town meeting. That's not an answer. That absolutely is not an answer. And it's not an answer that I'm looking for, and it's not an answer that I would go along with. But for, for what it's worth for me, until we get to a point of knowing where we are, having confidence of where we are, and having confidence of where we're going, we can't have a town meeting. That's the way I see it. And we can certainly meet with departments and department heads and go over their budgets and so forth. And just like we always do, we're not going to vote on them. I won't vote on them. And at that point, saying, well, you know, we don't know, but we think you might have to cut something. And here we go with we, th we think again. And, and it's, when we're in February and March, we don't want to be thinking about where we are or where we're going. We want to know where we are and where we're going. And, um, well, I'll just stop there. But I think you get my, my point. I do. And if we're going to, and, and with all due respect, and, and I appreciate all the candor, believe me, um, but it, it, we can continue this. Uh, I'd like to take and give you guys a rest. I'd like to bring in um, town clerk. I'd like to bring in EMS and, and um, uh, the library and emergency management just because they've been sitting here since 7 o'clock and they thought it was going to be kind of a quick meeting. Um, and we'll, we'll, yeah, I'm only going to beat up Mike Ryan just a little bit. <laughs> Half your budget, Mike, 50%. <laughs> Um, so, you know, we're looking the library, we're going to cut 75% out of the library, and, and poor Cara is going to look and <laughs> find a way to cut 3% out of hers. Um, we, we, I just want to give them an opportunity to, to take a minute, and then I'd love to have you guys come back and, and look at what's about to happen, and then tell me where you want to go from there, Bob, because we'll certainly help as, you as well. But we need, we need help, too. We need to know. Uh, I couldn't agree with Pat more. I, I don't understand how we're going to have a, a, an April town meeting if we can't get some solid numbers that we can bring forth and, and have be. I mean, they're never etched in stone. A budget's a living, breathing document, and two minutes after town meeting passes, the numbers change. Because that's just the way it is. The next light bill comes in, and that wasn't in the budget, and now the budget's out of whack again. Um, and, and, but we need to get a little closer than, you know, 
I've been watching the West Wing and there was a missile shot that missed by 137 and Leo says feet and the general says miles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is that a lot? <laughs> you know, so we need to get a little closer than we are. Okay, before you leave, um, so I don't disagree with you, Pat. I don't disagree with you, Alan, Beth, and the other two here. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's going to take some time. Well, that means putting off a town meeting for a month. I don't know. That's up to the select board. Um, but we are working diligently to get those yeah. numbers. There's get no them, doubt in my mind. Get them no. yeah. put yeah. to you. And it's embarrassing to me to be sitting here with the situation that we're in because that's not how the town's supposed to run. So, Can I ask you one question, Bob? Where, where do you think we're going to go from here? Do you think we're going to try to just fix Vadar and make this work for us, or do you think eventually we're going to go back? So, so I had a conversation with, with, it, right? Um, with the, yeah, right now it's with town council looking at contracts and things, but, but, but I also had a... But you 22, so was something in soft right not correct too? Or you guys, didn't you say no, they're doing someone's sheet working on no, FY22 balance sheet? Oh, maybe I said 22, but it, it, meaning the 23. 23, so okay. They, they yeah. closed, okay. You're in 24 yeah. right now. And I'm going to say 20, 23 is probably 98 to 99% where it, where it has been closed. Okay. okay? Because the, 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 the recap sheet's been done, been accepted, you've set a tax rate on it, and, that, and they have a balance sheet in. Okay, at this, at this particular and do, I just promise one more question. You said they're still putting in receipts. So you feel confident that the revenue budget's correct if they're only up through September? When, when you, Didn't the, the, you say they were still keying in some receipts? Are those revenue? They're, they're, they're keying them in as, as we speak. The, the expenses, they have been doing weekly since, the, since VADAR began, okay? The reports aren't necessarily wonderful to look at but those res those expenses are in the receipts yeah. there was a process going on between the accounting office in the Treasury and it, it, it was getting bogged down because they were having to do a certain procedure in the in the Treasurer's office the um, group that came in found a way around some of those things that were bogging it down and they have accelerated getting those receipts in um, at this particular point. Now are they up to date? No, but it, it, they kind of jumped ahead further than what they were able to do. But you feel course. comfortable with the revenue number even though you don't have a full six months of receipts? Well the revenue numbers, at least the way I've always okay. been doing it, has always been, I've always predicated revenues on prior years um, a a actuals because don't forget even even if things were running properly a lot of your revenues are sometimes uh, back loaded like if you take your um, your uh, motor vehicle exercise mm -hmm. you're not going to yeah. see that until like May April May late April May June that's when those numbers come in so it's not necessarily a one twelfth all the way. It, it is on the state. The state carves their stuff up exactly by by um, a twelfth of a year. But some of these things come pouring in towards the end of the year. So you're basically when when you're doing up a budget, okay, or at least the ones that I've always done. If you can rely on what you've done, and I'm relying on the old recap okay. sheets, then you can say, well. Is it is it plausible that we're going to make you know uh, 3.8 next year in the local receipts? Because remember that right now is the thing that's up in the air. Okay, where is the? It's mostly your local receipts because you've got something from the governor. Okay, and yeah, it's going to change three or four times before we get to the final uh, thing. But that we've got something engraved in stone. This is what we're telling you we're going to give you. Your your levy is pretty much engraved, and so it's a, it's a mathematical calculation. And other than for your new growth, which you know, if if it if it works, unless unless there was something like that, there was a big warehouse or something coming in up here. No, we had that chance, and we blew it. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, so I, mean, oh, I, I didn't mean to open up a, <laughs> yeah. a saw here, you know, a wound yeah. here. But in other words, unless something was large, you can kind of say, eh, you know, it's probably going to, you can actually see what, what you would yeah. get. And some of it's so piped up and then I, down. I kind of questioned last year's revenue budget. So I'm curious, are we close to what was actually in the budget but, uh, for, for 24? Right for, now. for 24, I, I mean, we would only have about, like, like I say, the, the, the maybe September at this point. Okay. So it was, uh, you know, so 23, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it was it was very low, all right, yeah. which, by the way, many towns do. I, I won't blame anybody on that because there are, there are plenty of places that are very conservative on that so as not to go over. But... Mm -hmm. um, That's uh, but yeah, it, it was it was lower. But I don't think that they could have predicted at the time the the the, the uh, yeah, not know, including the investment income. the investment income. And then, like they say, there was a there was a, a large grouping of one time um, non reoccurring. Uh, and that's things. the solar. No, it was it, it was a number of things. Like it was, I mentioned to you, like the opiate uh, okay. thing. Okay. There was something from the mass housing or something that got uh, put in there. Uh, I, I don't know whether it was a. Uh, Closed out grant or something. I, I, I saw the when I was looking through, but it was it was it was plugged in into that that area, and so it's it, it, it should you, you probably won't see those things again this year. You know, we really have to get to some oh, of the sorry. department heads. Yeah, yep. Sorry. We have to. It's, I just, I yep. just don't want to be unfit, and they got to get up and go to work tomorrow too. So, well, not necessarily Mike, but you know. <laughs> 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 Right. <coughs> yeah, take a break, you guys, and let me um, let me ask EMS to come on up, Mike. The last one. Huh? The last one. Else All right, Tom Walsh, come on up. Only take a minute for you, anyhow. Not quite that long. Sorry. Not quite that long. You have to find it first. Chief Walsh, how are you? I'm well. Welcome. To a little fun time we're having here tonight. Are you having a good time? I was so very, very good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to make this real easy for Tom. Um, this other professional services, am I got the right line with that, uh, John, Tom? Yeah. Okay. Other professional services is twelve thousand dollars. FY twenty four, FY twenty five requested twelve six. Mm -hmm. um, this is for a PR firm. In the event that we have a catastrophe in town, and we need someone to mm -hmm. put out a news Seven. cycle. Um, originally, this was also going to be joint with the schools. The school backed it, uh, opted out. They backed okay. out. Um, I spoke with Chief Doofley. We were talking about budget cuts, and he said we could take this, um, but to check with Emergency Management Director first, could we take this out of his budget and just for this year opt out? Um, and I believe you and I discussed it, and we were going to talk about you could get a hold of this firm and see if they would answer the phone in the event of. I spoke with the chairman of the select board today, and his attitude was the same. Um, if something were to go wrong, we could certainly ask them to come in, and we, we, you know, we obviously so is this find like a way a to pay. Them. For it's them? a retainer, so if we can cut it out completely. It'll take twelve thousand. Was it the whole twelve six or just twelve thousand? Uh, well, it, for next year, it's uh, twelve six. Right, so we take the twelve <coughs> six out. Uh, we'll reduce the budget by that amount. Uh, there's really, there's, there's nothing else to cut. Well, there is a position I know that we had talked about someone was bumping up, so are we going to keep that if we don't balance no, well, the budget? I, I, just, I, I don't want to say that, but it's still in here. Yeah. Okay, what I said was that I was going to have to work additional hours at my rate of pay okay, in so order to get wor some work done that I couldn't get done on the 15 hours that I, that I want to work every week. Um, I didn't want to work that fit more than those 15 hours. I so I hired someone making much less than me that is getting the work done for about half the price. Um, so, so we already have someone hired. 
Yeah. I just want to make sure. They've been there. They've been there all this year, okay. and it's nine hours a week that they're working in order to get the document work done. So it's yeah. actually saving us money. Right. She, but yeah. she's already currently on payroll. Right. This was not a new hire. Yes. Yeah, so, see, we can't tell because right. we just got the old budget right. and I'm sorry? other purchase services. No, no. She's no. up in the emergency salary. regular salaries. Oh, the salaries. Yeah. Okay. See, we can't tell you're spending it because we're getting the old budget. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not. I see that. I don't like the way this is put together because, again, it 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 doesn't break it down. So it doesn't. It looks like. With all due respect, the sheet that I'm looking at looks like you got a 12.2 percent yeah. raise, and and that's not accurate. No, you know. No, no one's so. getting no one's getting more than a two percent raise here. This is just no, no. I understand someone that. Someone that we I yeah. paid them out of disaster recovery funds and I'm putting them in the budget because that's where it belongs. It's also worth noting that this is uh, like the last two years now where emergency management has really had any budget that impacted the town prior to Pilgrim closing. Um, they they bore the whole cost, and in fact, the first time that we dealt with emergency management was when Pilgrim shut your phones off, and we had to do a transfer. Do you remember that? Yeah. We had to do a funds transfer for you to buy a phone system for downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. So, the reason why I think you're saying him going up at 12 is the same thing that happened to Paul last year, just before they went into the town meeting. There were some adjustments made. And instead of putting it towards the individual account, the bottom line was adjusted. So it was adjusted by X, but it was the formula. So now when you were going down, the formula wasn't adding up the thing. Then somebody came back and put the money in, which you are working with the bottom line. But right. in, in Bob's case, they took the whole amount and dumped it into his line. <coughs> uh, well, 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 in line you, it makes it look like like Bob Fennessy is only getting a 05 percent increase this year, and makes Elaine look like she's going up by seven or eight percent. Mm -hmm. Be about so right. In the wrong spot, you know. This is also two salaries on your line, also. Am I correct? My my 15-hour week salary. Ken Morris and Ken's, stipend, right, and 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 um, now this other Nancy. person nine oh. hours a week okay. doing uh, document work. So we would take your budget of seventy five five seventy five. Yes. You want to do that? Ben? Subtract. We're not voting though. No, no, we're not voting. I just want to get a number. Twelve six. Less twelve six. Okay, so seventy five. Well, 600. 62,975. Okay. We're not voting. So what we're going to do, I guess, now is compile these numbers on this paper, mm -hmm. and then we'll have a meeting. Um, probably, I, I guess it's going to just wind up being, it might as well be joint with the select board and just present this and unless department heads come back and we find some hidden money and Santa leaves a bag under the chimney. I don't know. There's very little room to hide any money in this budget. There's no, there's no hidden money in this. That's why I want, I, that's, I, I chose, by the way, I chose tonight's departments specifically. EMS is self-sufficient. It's an enterprise account. He can cut his budget by 50%. It's going to make no impact on the town of Cava. None. Zero. Um, Tom Walsh has a very simple budget, and, and I had a targeted number that I was looking at. Um, the town clerk is a small budget, and hers is pretty cut and dried also. But there's going to be some stamps we might be able to save. And uh, library with Carol Julius, uh, their budget's not that huge either. Um, so there may be a couple of dollars we can cut, and perhaps she can seek a waiver. But we certainly can't take 10% out of the library if we only take 1% out of O&M. They've got to be, to get the waiver, you have to have some equal cuts. Um, so, you know, this is where we're at with it. I just wanted to make this as easy as I could. So thank you very much, Tom. Appreciate that. Um, I think that thank you for the help, because that's what, that's what did it for us. Any, any well, questions? Thank you, Mike, for no. taking last. Thank you. Because you can be a little while, wouldn't you? Okay. <laughs>
He learned from the best. He learned from the best. He did. I saw the first time you heard that one. We're not going to let Mike talk much tonight, believe me. Um, Kara's out of the room, so Carol. Okay. Hello. I suppose I might as well ask you, you have a copy of yours? I, do, I have it on my phone. Okay. So, help us out. Yep. Do you have specific questions? I mean, so... I don't, as I really have no idea. I was told that there's a waiver that's available. You need to tell me what this is sure. because there's certain levels you've got to maintain right. or we can't get books from Inter Town, Wareham, right. can't come here, right. I don't know. So, in order to be certified by the state, by the Board of Library Commissioners, there are thresholds that we have to meet that include open a certain number of hours, you have to have a library director with a master's in library science, you have to have, um, your book budget has to be 16% of your bottom line, and then the other big carrot is that your, what they call the MAR, the Municipal Appropriation Requirement, has to go up on average 2.5% over the previous three fiscal years. If any of that changes, then you can apply for a waiver, which we have done in the past and we've always gotten it. To get a waiver, you still have to meet the hours open and the um, materials expenditure, but you can get a waiver um, if you take a cut, as long as the library's cut isn't what they consider disproportionate. And for it to be not disproportionate, it, has to, it can't be 5% more than any other department. So if everybody took a 1% cut and you told us to cut 7%, we wouldn't be able to get a waiver. Okay. So as long as you know, we're in line with everybody else, it's, it's fine. Um, and, I, and I would say that probably any adjustments we did to the bottom line is gonna result in us needing a waiver because this year we only qualified for the waiver, it was less than $200 that we <laughs> skated in on. Really? So, yeah. um, which was great because the year before we needed a waiver. So. Okay. Um, when things got really bad like 10 years ago, they made it so that you could apply for a waiver as many years in a row as you needed. Now the Board of Library Commissioners thinks thing, has consider things to be better, so you can only apply for a waiver five years in a row. And on your third year, you have to show like a, a plan from the town of how you're gonna not need a waiver anymore in like two years or whatever. You only show an increase this year of, of $18,000 I see two reductions in department head and librarians, but then an increase well, in clerical. Well, that I'm department head reduction is, is false. Is this where this, yeah, this That's is where this got off the rails? false narrative or whatever, and it's what George has explained that. Okay. The, so the there wasn't, a, there wasn't an 8% reduction and a 22% increase? No. <laughs> the number that's in there for the department head salary for FY24 is, is too high. Okay. Which is why, it, like, it looks like I'm getting a cut. With my, but I'm not. It's a oh. two. It's two percent. But what's did in you my add contract. a clerical person this year from last year? Did I what? Did you get a new clerical person in FY24? So we've had a whole bunch of staffing changes. So I think anything looking at the current um, salary lines and then what's actually happening, the bottom line is the same. We don't. We're not going to need any more money. But there's been a lot of changes. I had two people retire. The assistant director retired, Amy Shepherdson, and then I had someone from circulation retire. So we promoted the cataloger to assistant director. She was already full time, so there was no change there, but um, her salary, even coming in at a higher rate, was significantly less than Amy's, because Amy had okay. been there like 25 years, so there was money <laughs> saved yeah. there. But then we took her full time position that she left as cataloger, we split it into two part time positions, so that's why there is an increase in that clerical line. And do we know we were gonna do that last year? No. Okay. No, but so I was able was like to. So that was like a net add this year. It was an add of one part time, or yeah, yes. Um, but it didn't add anything to our budget because of the money we saved. With it, just it looks like you add you went up in your budget. I know, but I, I don't 000, think 15. that. Again, I think those FY twenty four numbers are not okay. accurate. Sure. Um, nothing mm -hmm. that we did in all of that affected our bottom line for what had already been voted. For, for FY24. But there's technically no new hire in this We did, budget. we hired two new people in the fall. We, because we took one full-time position and split it into two part-time positions. Okay. So there are, there are two new people and it was a little bit more money, but because we saved in the, 
the promotion that we did and then also those people came in at a lower rate and and then again I have like somebody who retired from circulation and I just replaced her in January and it's a lower rate um, than what what she was getting because she was at the top of the step and the new person's at step one so this would be real helpful if I had an actual 23 so I could see what you actually spent in 23 on some of these line items can we cut well let me ask you that yeah. where can we cut back a couple of bucks so, I mean, anything, uh, respectfully, I would say anything we did, I would rather see us doing expenses than personnel, because, yeah. Yeah, we don't want to cut people. Um, you know, so, but here's the thing, like, if you cut, we have the revolving fund that we get for doing passport applications. We get $35 for every passport application that we do, and we do a significant, well, I consider a significant number of the passport, Department of State doesn't, but... Um, so we're bringing in revenue, and I'm using that to supplement our book budget, and we are bringing in more than we're actually we, spending. Where is that going? Is that going to revenue, or is that going to like an It's expense? a revolving fund for us. If you look, I don't know if you where have revenue to you? sheets, but it's under, um, I think it says revenue? passport fees, well, you, lost books, I but, think is what okay. it says. But you, what she's saying is it's going into a revolving fund. For the library. To be used, so it doesn't, it doesn't flow into into the right. local receipts, right. if that's what you're, you're asking. So is it like, if I pulled up, I don't know, this books and material line, am I going to see like some credits for revenue and debits for No, expenses? it goes into a revolving okay. fund. No, that's a whole okay. different, and different And I think area. it's called lost and damaged books or something like that. I don't, yeah. I don't know. But um, so the money, so when Got we... Got it hidden pretty well. It's hidden, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so once I spend like, because the 56000 that I think is in there, that's not 16% of the bottom line. 16% um, of the bottom line is like in the high 60s. So I spend the money from that revolving fund to get us to the 16%. So I can, can I can spend more of that to get us to the 16%. That's considered, even though it's not considered part of the municipal appropriation requirement, it's still money that's coming into the library. So we can spend it on that. And then we also have the money that we get from state aid. So, you know, if you said to me, you know, cut whatever amount like I can make that up with the money that we get from state yeah. aid it just doesn't yeah. count towards us qualifying for state aid yeah. if that makes sense uh, I can tell Pat I, <laughs> what can I, I? Well, I'm going to go back to something that, that you said Carol about that the FY24 budget numbers may not be Correct. I can tell you that my salary is not so, correct. So, I mean... So, but you're not so, the first one I've heard this from. Yeah. So, and mine is really obvious uh, because it looks like I'm taking a cut, yeah. which, I mean, so I love the town how, of Carver, but I wouldn't how, do that unless you made me. Um, so, how, how, how can <laughs> I we... I can't tell with the others. I, but, I don't so, know. So, how do we know that whether we're increase, decrease, or, I mean, how do we... How do we I mean, I could provide those figures based on PAFs. We could Your do it. Your bottom line, Carol just said, she was did the fact the bottom line. It, I think when it was done, when we put it in, okay, at the time, said, okay, the bottom line is X, mm -hmm. okay? The bottom line is still the bottom line, which is what the town meeting voted. But the problem is, is when you're trying to look individually at, at this? sub line <coughs> and say, how are we doing in this particular line? It's skewed because what they did, and I'll, I'll, I'll just make an example. Take two, you have two lines in your budget for 10,000 bucks, okay? you. You went to a town meeting and voted $20,000, okay, bottom line. But before that happened, somebody said, we're gonna add an extra $1,000. And 500 was supposed to go to line one, so it would be 10,005. And then another 500 was supposed to go to line two, 10,005. Instead, at the bottom, in the 20,000, they just added 21,000, okay? Yeah. But 10,000 and 10,000 didn't add up to 21,000, okay? Now, somebody comes and do, does the um, uh, a journal entry later. I forgot where that was supposed to go. I'm gonna take the thousand bucks and stuff it into line one. So now it's 10,001, okay? Line two didn't get the 500 bucks. Five, they're 500 bucks. Now you're looking at the, the next year, 
And it's skewed because, I mean, bottom line, you're, you're right where you're supposed to be, but the individual lines, you're yeah. not. Well, you here, following? Here, yeah. yeah, I remember you know, that. I, I, and I know exactly yeah, what I, Pat's going to come out yeah. with next. <laughs> I, I know I, where you're going. I, yeah. I, I get that, you know, but, you know, here we go with, I think again, and here we go with a, a low or no level of confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting to be at, at a loss for words here. Well, I, I think that what, how, it, what you're coming how down can, to is it, we could say to Carol, listen, okay, Carol, help us out, cut 10 grand, and the 10 grand means no more to this budget than if we say, Carol, can you cut 2,500? Because we don't know if the 10 grand is going to be helpful, or the 2,500 is going to be helpful, or they're both going to be unnecessary. Right. All I can do is tell you what the impact would be to life yeah. services if we, you know, if we did that. And I mean, and looking at those salaries, so I know that mine, that 925 is wrong. I am, sorry, Pat, but yeah. I'm fairly confident. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> That the eleven thousand and thirty no. is correct because that is where it says librarians. That's the children's librarian and the assistant director. Those, yeah. those me and the two of them are the only full-time yeah. people, and that's where we saw the reduction because the new assistant director makes less yeah. than the but, one. Okay. But so, um, and, and then but the, the new hires added the twenty-two percent. You know, yeah, I think that that is. I don't know. We, we shouldn't even be having this conversation. I, I, you know, I feel like that's really. accurate, but really. I, I, you uh, know, see, because the other numbers aren't, I can't say for Carol sure. Carol feels like it's accurate. We feel like the budget's close. They feel like the numbers are. I feel like you shouldn't <laughs> tell me to cut anything. I mean, you know. <laughs> um, I think we're on the point. I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> I don't know, Bob. I have my questions about this. I, I, I don't know how we do this going on. I, I mean, I what, what is, town administrator, sir, tell us, advise us. What would you have me say to, to the library at this point? What, what do I ask Carol for? I'm, I'm not trying to be that guy, but I, I don't know what we're doing. So some, I don't know if Have a seat right here, join us. <clears throat> I'll bring you up here next, John. So, ah. some, um, so some budgets obviously have more leeway in them, where you can look for cuts. Well, there's some some budgets are, are so tight to begin with that you can't, you know, without making a dramatic uh, change in their ability to do things. So I think that's what you're weighing out. If you know you're not making cuts right now, again, I, I think you're hearing from them so you can formulate in your mind. You know, when we get to that bottom line that we got to get to, uh, regardless when the town meeting is, if it's in April, if it's in May, if it's in June, it's it's still we need that bottom line. So at some point, uh, you guys are going to make a recommendation. Um, we're going to look at the cuts on our end, what we can do, and we're going to try and in the meantime work on these numbers. In the background, again, with, with numerous assistance from, from professionals who came in to fix a lot of these problems, and hopefully they'll get fixed yeah. in due time. But, uh, and, but again, you know, I, I, I don't know what else to say other than, than we're dealing with what we got. Yeah, and it's you know, the cards that were dealt, and, 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 we're, we're and we get that. But I, I don't see how we or anybody else on this committee can make a recommendation right now we don't know what the numbers are yeah and again you know hopefully we, the numbers may, will come and, and forward we, as not, we as we know. get the numbers put in uh now that they're moving faster to be able to jump into that and get the revenue numbers in get we have closed out 23 so we got those numbers we have we have six months of 24 correct in uh, in Veda, yeah, uh, the, uh, yes. Yeah. So expense. so we know how much a half a year cost for the departments yeah. in this in this I, year. I think that, um, you need the mic. You just have to realize that um, you know you got to cut something. So mm -hmm. we're just saying, what can you cut? Right. It doesn't have to be um, you know a big cut in your situation, but um, 
we're recommending that we reduce the budget a little bit. So, and we're not voting, so it's not like it's going to do anything. But if you had to take, you know, if you had to take some money out, where would you take right. it out? Right. So I would take it out of expenses. I would probably take it out of like operating supplies and, um, you know, things that wouldn't have as much of an impact on the public, right. but would have more of an impact on. I like the, the back uh, book. end of things, if that you know, if that makes sense. So I'm looking at your line here, books and reference materials, mm -hmm. fifty-eight thousand two hundred. Yep. So I mean, could you reduce that? What would what would be the you know small amount that you could reduce so without if, making an impact? So that line in particular, if we reduce, then we have to make it up to be for certification. Because gotcha. it's got to be sixteen percent. I, I, I knew you had but, to be certified, right? But I can make that up with the money that we bring in from passport applications. So we you know we could take that down. We could level fund it from the previous year or you know or even go a little lower and we can make it up with the revenue that we bring in from accepting passport applications. So we could pull the seventeen hundred dollar increase out of that and perhaps cut down the operating supplies a little bit. Yeah. Can I just ask when you report back for, to the li for about your library expenses, do you have to report back like health insurance and other type of fringe benefits? No. Um, if it come, if it was in our budget, if yeah. it was baked into our budget, then we would. But why we, don't we do that? The state just doesn't do okay. it that way. It, they go by however a particular town does handles their town meeting or or their budget process. So like we don't get like some libraries get credit um, for custodial salaries and um, you know. Um, lights and elect you know and heat and mm -hmm. all of that none of that is in our budget so we don't get Just any like, credit for that when I'm when I'm hearing you talk and I'm looking at this I'm like okay I get it you hired two people for one FTE for like the mm -hmm. you know the full time but really in the background health insurance has now gone up for two people dental insurance no they're not eligible for health insurance oh they're not they're not okay. no yeah. all right right, right. right. So no, they're nine, all 19 hours, hours a week a, nope yeah. <laughs> okay. I used to do 19 and three quarters Didn't get the <laughs> no okay no. yeah nope no. all right never mind it's better. only full-time <laughs> so only um the the director the children's librarian and the assistant yeah. director everybody else is part-time so, okay so Makes oh i fine. wouldn't have done that <laughs> I'm like, i wouldn't have asked for that <laughs> so 1700 we could cut out of that and then uh how, what would be uh work and i mean and they think the other thing too like like postage i mean you know some of those things like I, we can get by we can i can make it up with state aid i can make up um you know, seminar and training, maybe we don't go to a conference next year. Like, you know, there are things like that that we can do. You know, if you gave me like a specific amount and said, okay, Carol, this is, this is your dollar figure, I could come back and give you very specific ways that I would do it. All I want to tell you is in terms of impact is it will trigger that waiver process with the state. And that's fine, and we've done it before, and I get you know a financial form from the finance director, and I get a letter from the town administrator, and I write a letter, and we fill out worksheets, and it's all good as long as it was, it's considered fair. So how about this, Carol? Do me a favor. Yep. Um, rather than pin anybody down in numbers, target, just for a target number, yep. see if you can't find 7,500 bucks someplace. Okay. And then see what that'll do to you. And maybe play a second scenario with 10,000 and just stop. Okay, that's a, that's a significant percentage of our budget. That's what I'm concerned with. So work it backwards, but, maybe to come back at five thousand. But like nine thousand would probably still have you at a two percent increase, <coughs> right? Because if eighteen thousand's at a four percent, right? But uh, but I'm just saying, like, if that's because our department is so small, right? And say that's like a five percent. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the math person. George is the math person. But like, if that's like a a high percentage for us. And then, like you said, like operations and management and police mm -hmm. and everybody else gets Honestly a 1% budget and we're up here, we, you're not, then we won't be eligible for a waiver. That's all. Took, I don't know what you're doing with We just took $12,000 out of a $75,000 uh, 75, budget. That's a hell of a lot more than 5%. I, I guess my, I think I would, well, I, and I can do the percentages. It's, you know, we well, took 15% to, to out of Tom Walsh's budget. But just you need now. to just show a 2% increase, right? Is two and a half. Saying? It's two and a half over three-year average. Okay. So if you had two and a half percent this year, that would pretty much be like your well, you had salaries for two percent, and then a half a percent for right. everything else. Right. Which is so any cut is going to trigger that waiver. Okay. Necessity, which so, is fine. Like I said, and I just I just want to be clear that as long as it's a, a fair cut, yeah. it'll be yeah. fine. I know. I'm just. I'm just in my head doing the math. So Five thousand seventy-five hundred is a hell of a lot less than we just did to emergency management. Yeah. I wish that we could count like the, all the money that the town spent, you know, on the HVAC and on 
the roof and the painting. And, and we're not that even right charging now. you. Fortunately, for that. that doesn't count. Yeah. I know. And we're not even charging you for Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> But, get, but I mean, just your salaries, right? Just the, your annual salary increase is 2%. So you're almost, you know, we don't want to do that, but if we're in this position, you could almost reduce all the increases on the expense side. You could? Almost could. Yeah, I mean, if you said level, level service, level funded for our expenses, I'd make it work. It's fine. I'd make it work. Not that, not that I wanted no, to. No, but I'm just saying, saying, like, we can, we can. I mean that's that's not that's just three thousand dollars. That's yeah. That's easy. Yeah. I don't want to say it's easy. Anything we do is going to have an impact. Obviously, our budget is not big, but I would minimize what happened yeah. with the public end of well, things. And we don't even I'm, know. I'm looking at the sheet, like what the increase. I'm assuming your salaries are going up two percent. Well, I know the, the union. Know we're not so everybody is in the union. So <coughs> whatever is the union contract, except for. Me, but I have a contract, and that's two percent. And then the assistant director and the children's librarian are on the salary grid, and they those those are two percent steps as well. Yeah. So, so when you need when a two you, and a half, you get two right there. Okay. When you when you talk about the revolving <coughs> accounts, and and I remember when I was in the school department with many revolving accounts, and they had limitations as to what we could actually um, expend that money for. Do do your revolving accounts or one or more revolving accounts have limitations as to what you can use them for so we used to have to vote it at town meeting every year but we don't re we don't revote those now it's like one thing and yeah, i believe some, it, some you do and some you don't yeah and i yeah. believe it says in there it is for the purpose of books and materials okay but that's yeah. fine because that's so it's yeah so it's got a limitation it. but it's got a uh, a good purpose Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why okay. when we when we took over doing passports, when um, the federal government said the town clerk's office couldn't do it anymore, and I said, well, we'll do it, but yeah. I'm gonna keep the thirty-five dollars a whack, <laughs> you know, and use it yeah. use it for that. Okay. And it so, has it has been a big difference because the town hasn't fully funded that line uh, according to what the state says yeah. for many years. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe we can go back to the minimum of the twenty nine fifty and a max of five thousand. I can. I mean, I'll I'll do level you want me to do. and then see if we can do yeah. the five thousand over and above. So, at, at least the level funded for three thousand. Yep. And then see if we can't do get it up to five thousand. There's not a lot of room in this budget to play, and that's going to be the way it is town wide because the vast majority of these budgets is salaries. Right. So, and we're not trying to cut any personnel. Our people so, are you know, now we're playing with sure. light bulbs, you know. <laughs> we turn the lights off. Let's we'll turn yeah. the lights off upstairs. <laughs> <coughs> oh, wait till I get on him in here. You want to see a cut. We'll start looking at gasoline costs and so forth and so on, because that's a little higher than we anticipated it to be. It's an election year. The price of gas is down. We can pull that, we can pull that additional expense right out of the budget. And I'd like to shoot the guy that gave our snow budget three hundred and sixty thousand dollars i wish it was fifty thousand because you can over you can you can deficit spend you can. It. and that's you, you can't roll it back I, I started to look up other cities and towns city of cambridge snow budget sixty eight thousand dollars can you imagine they can't plow three side streets for sixty eight thousand yeah, dollars right but they've never raised their snow budget, which we never did either. So if you can do that, that would be, I'd be, happy to be well, something we can try. And then, you know, right. one of us yeah. will be in, you know, to see you and we yeah. have the, the hat down low and the baseball bat. No. You know, we'll come right <laughs> on. I'll send Tony in. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Good. No? Thank That's you, all Carol. I got, Carol. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Good luck. So let's see. Level. Let's we'll see what happens. Kara, come on up, town clerk. We're sorry to keep you so late. Kara yeah, has her hands full this year. We have a presidential yeah. election. Yeah, we do. Um, I know we, we talked about it earlier, but um, um, 
I don't really see where I can cut. Um, well, you got to come this, up with something. Is money at the end that was appropriated a few town meetings ago that still shows on my budget? It's um. Oh gosh, it's on this other sheet. It's for new election equipment, which I never purchased. I still have the old election equipment. I mean, we haven't spent that. I've gone without a part-time person in my office for almost three years, so that money always went back in to the uh, budget. So it's $24,000 that um, they actually pulled out of my budget. It was in the original one, um, and they said they zeroed that out. They took out. That's, tell, it's, it's on an article. Tell Clark or you, oh, it's on an article. Yeah, okay, it's on an article, article from um, a few years ago. So that we never used. Um, there's twelve hundred dollars that. Yeah, I but if it's an but article, it's we have to get we have to get town meeting vote to take it out. I, they probably did when, last year, right? I don't think we they zeroed touch? it. Okay. Can you check into that, uh, mm -hmm. Bob? See if we zeroed that article. Yeah, it was still on when we originally <coughs> sat down, and then we it decided is, that, well, to take that out. That's money that will come back out. Yeah. I think that you're going to find there may there may still be money floating around in some of these articles that never got zero. She closed a lot out last year just to make capital budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many more, but <coughs> it was a lot. And I don't have a wish list. I never come in with a wish list. All I usually do is what I absolutely need to run. And this year we have a presidential year. I have three elections that'll hit on that. And yeah. um, it's it's going to be tight. Um, I just got a bill today that was five hundred dollars more than I anticipated and then that I budgeted for, and that's for the coding of the cards that we use with that old election equipment. So that's probably the vendor's way of saying, buy this or you're going to keep paying for that. You know, and we really don't have a choice. It's um, it's good equipment. It works. Um, it's it's still functional. Um, there's a little bit of maintenance to it, but um, I, I think we can get through at least a year with it and then look at it in, you know, 2025, 2026 and see what, what, how we look there. Um, um, I don't, I don't know what else I can, I'm, I'm scared because I don't think I gave myself enough and now I have to cut something and I just, I don't know what to cut. I don't know what to cut. Um, there's $1,200 I have to um, have our vault maintained and to replace a lock on one of the fireproof file cabinets. And I mean, that's $1,200, it's not a lot of money, but um, you know, I guess that's something that we can, um, we could put off if we had to. I don't, I don't know what else I can. I'm just, I'm really nervous. So everything has gone up in price. And um, again, I'm trying to run three elections on this particular one. What is, <coughs> what is the, 5,000 on the registrars for other professional so services. Those cover. are the cards that I was just mentioning. Um, ES&S, that's our um, uh, handicap machine that we have, our um, disabilities machine. You have to have that, it's a state yeah. requirement. So you have to pay for cards for that even though no one uses it. And uh, the others come from LHS, that's our election um, service provider. They're the ones that have the machines. And those cards have to be carded and coded for each election. So um, some of the elections that we have coming up, the ballots are going to be extremely large. So it's an extra cost then, because everything that's on that ballot is on that card. And we can't shop anywhere else for it. They're the only one. So it's kind of a monopoly that they have with it. And other than buying new election <laughs> equipment that may not require that card, it's still going to require some kind of uh, coding that we, we can't do ourselves. Um, I've never gotten any ARPA money. I've never gotten any of the COVID funds, even though I asked for monies at the time. So um, some of the things that we have in here that cost a little more, um, the um, codification that we're finishing up, I mean, we've already paid <coughs> for it. So it would be kind of silly to drop that, even though we've, we're right there with it. Um, that's going to be on the warrant for town meeting. Um, that gives you, I mean, it's 900 and something dollars to have a subscription for the year that the, not just the town can use, but every anybody that goes onto our website will have use of that for the bylaw. So, and if you looked at the way that they were, it's, it's a wonderful thing that we've we've done this because they look really nice and neat. I've seen the draft version of them. So, do our other cool. towns around us use that? Yes, if they we do. want to look at theirs, yeah, okay. general code. Yeah, okay. and you can go on and see what their e-code subscription. 
looks like. And it's, it's basically, you could be sitting in a meeting and, and want to know what one of the bylaws are, and you can just put a word in, and it will show up on your tablet or your phone or whatever it is that you're using. And I don't know how often you watch some of the meetings where you see people struggle, and they don't know what it is. Or they have a, a book that they're trying to flip through, and I think it's a lot easier to have that than, um, or handy at least to at least have it so that they can get through a meeting with it. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what else. I think most of this, even though it's not level funded, is necessities, like it seems like. It doesn't well, seem like it's, yeah. like you said, not a wish list, but no, I have a wish list. because of the law it has to be a certain way. Yeah. It's an election year, so. And the state keeps changing stuff on us. That's the other part of it. Um, as soon as we have something down with the system, they go and change it. And then we have to reach to meet that. And uh, that's training, <coughs> changing the way that we do things, and maybe even some of our office supply. So today we did um, uh, vote by mail ballots. And um, we were going to use our glue sticks. And I said, you know what? See, we'll try how the mail machine does it first yeah. and see if we can seal it that way. It's a little less labor intensive too, and a little easier on your fingers. Yeah. yeah. First day of it. <laughs> did you say, can I just ask you a question? Sure. Did you say you had an open position in here that you haven't been I, I had an open position. So okay. I've had somebody, I've had, actually had two people. The first person didn't work out, and now I have um, a person that we retain from inside of town hall. Yeah, Denise. Yeah, Denise. Okay. But yeah. that's it. So this clerk line is just one person. It's not anything. No, open. I have um, no, I have two. Donna, who's okay. the well, office assistant. Okay. She's full time. She was hired full time. And um, Denise just came on board in August. Okay. And the other person uh, left in July. Okay. So, so you have no open. Positions. I have no open okay. positions. No, it's just us. And Denise is only 19 hours. She's just part time. She's retired, right? Yes. Yep. <coughs> Denise was in payroll. In, yeah. in, in the in, when payroll was well, still is when it was in the assessor's office, and then she retired and went downstairs to work part time with Carr. Yeah. I thought I heard open position. That's why. I think she said there was an open position. I had for, a but for almost months. three years. I went year. without, but okay. not. For a presidential year, yeah, I, I don't know what I would do right now. Um, I have registrars, but they they have jobs and they're not able to come in and help. Um, and uh, senior work off, um, it's it's you know uh, hit or miss. We we share somebody upstairs with the assessing department actually. So yeah, I don't see a lot in here either. No. No, she's got a lot going on. She's got the, the, the to set up the town meeting. She's got the um, the primary. She's got the presidential election. Yeah, we have a state primary too. No, oh, that's right, so the state yeah, primary. March, September, and November, and then our and then the town. Well, the March is in this April. year, though. Right, that 24. one's in that one. Okay. But yeah, we're actually doing the work for it right now. So yeah. it would be the local election, the September primary, and then the November. Um, General presidential. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And local and elections in 24 too. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have three elections that hit this one. Okay. Yeah. How'd you close out last year on postage? I'm not a hundred percent sure. However, we we probably gave some of it back, but this year we have all those ballots to mail. Um, the state does give us back a good percentage of that money. Uh, I think Kathy had said we just got some money back. I thought it was somewhere around six thousand dollars, but I can I can tell you exactly tomorrow. I can get back to you with it. Um, uh, it they just keep changing stuff. So, so if the state reimburses us six thousand dollars in postage, that goes what into the general fund, and we mm -hmm. leave her budget alone. Yeah, wasn't well, that convenient? I think we always give back something. I've never. Um, I think you do. That's money. why I'm asking yeah. the question. Yeah. And we don't know. We just don't know what we're going to have to uh, do for postage. Um, we have mass inactivation where we have to take people that are no longer um, up, um, filling out the census. And when we take them off, they have to be notified. So that's, that's an expense <clears throat> to do that. Um, why did dues and members go up so high? Dues and members, I changed around. So, which line item are you looking at? The looking town at the town clerk line went up 
Okay. Four hundred ninety-seven percent. It went up because it management. includes the e-code subscription for general code, and that's nine hundred ninety-five dollars. And the entire town has access to that. Actually, everybody has access to that. <coughs> the remainder of it is two hundred dollars, and that's uh, dues for the Mass Town Clerks Association and uh, the New England um, Institute, where we get our certification and classes from. Okay. And you maintain the e-code system, or does that come out of the clerk's office? Or? Uh, well, I don't even know if it should be mine. I, I was going to say, why mine. isn't that above I, the line? Or why uh, isn't that? It's town-wide, and I do have that note in my budget. You probably can't see that, but I do have that. It is town-wide. Everyone uses it, not just us. So the school does, too? Well, anybody that needs anybody to who use our bylaws, okay. zoning and so general bylaws. bylaws. See, right. yeah, let's yeah. look at where we can put that 995, see if that can go somewhere <laughs> else. What? I just want to say. Might it's, also switch the percentage. Yeah. <laughs> I just going to say it's, it it's like it's like an exercise in futility. It is. When it you, is. When you, Did you notice when, that? When you when you try to uh, scrounge out funds out of these uh, small department budgets, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's it's difficult to do. It's painful to do. And you've got um, obviously salaries, which is the big, which is the biggest mm -hmm. part of everything. But then you got to look at some, you got to look at some bigger places like health insurance, utilities, and things like that. That's where you, that's where you that. can really make progress. We can't make progress <coughs> with Kara. Okay. All's, all we're going to do is <coughs> aggravate her. And then she's going to walk out of here and be mad at us. <laughs> okay, so you know you can't be doing this with these with these little budgets. You got to get to the bigger numbers, and to to make any kind of progress, we're going to get from Karen nine hundred and ninety five dollars. No, I was actually going to go yeah. for the fifty bucks down here. On the <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, come then on. Then Kara could yeah. say, "Look, I yeah. cut my budget." Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. I get. I don't know. That's. I agree with you. I agree yeah. with Tony. I and I agree with Pat. And believe me, you think I like this? No. <laughs> no. Have I ever treated you this way? And the no, whole time we've never. been coming before FinCom, have I ever? No. It's you always been upbeat. Help. What's on your yeah. wish list? Yeah. How's everything going? Yeah. You think you you're doing a great job? Yeah. How you know? What do you got for your budget this year? You sure that's going to be enough? Do you need a couple of dollars more? I yeah. remember year we bought right. some clickers. Yeah, that's but, right. But we always knew where we were. And we knew where we were going. Yeah. And this year we don't. <laughs> well, I saved you guys $1,200. So um, I had to do a project. And there were supposed to be books in my office that every clerk has. And I don't have them in my office. So I had to borrow them from the town of Stoughton. I sent my husband up there to go get them. And then I said, great, we'll make copies of those books. And then we'll have them again. It was $1,200 at Staples to have them copied. And um, when he went down to get the estimate, I said, oh, no, 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 no. That's ridiculous. We can't do that. And I don't want to take a chance on taking this person's books and having them jam in my copier. So at my last conference, the town clerk in Reading said, I have those. I have them online. Would you like to have them? So now we will have them as online manuals. Because I don't know how, I'm still amazed after sitting there reading all these books, trying to find out what I was trying to figure out, that I made it as far as I did without them. So we just didn't have them in our office. And then that's elections, general town procedures, every form you can think of. How so, much would they have cost to buy? Well, they, I don't think you could buy them. They were put together years ago by the town clerks association and then updated by town clerks as they had them. So as things changed, they updated the book, they put them in a binder, and then you had them. But we didn't have them. So um, it's great that, um, that we have that resource, at least, that someone will share. Yeah. You know. I'm going to leave her alone. I think what we're going to do. 995, both yeah. the way. It's, the thing we got to do is what, when when we come up with these with these smaller budgets. I mean, we get a budget presentation, we talk about it, and say, you know, there there might be a problem here down the road. So, Carol, why don't you just think about what you can do? And 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 a lot of it is, you know, we're putting people on the spot right now. They weren't weren't planning on coming here. Well, know, talk, actually, talk, talking the, about this either. So it's not true because the word had gone out that. 
well, you know, there were going to be budget cuts <coughs> for departments. So this is not like there's nobody's in shock here tonight. But uh, what about increasing fees? Um, the fees went up when I first came in. We went. We were the lowest paid. Uh, with the yeah. lowest paid. We were the lowest priced for our vitals. I think we were charging five dollars for them, and we went up to ten. Um, dogs are still at seven and ten dollars, respectively. That's not a lot. No, right. Um, fines don't go out. I think they could fine. Um, I'm not allowed to. I can give a late fee, but I can't fine someone for not licensing their dog. That comes from um, animal control. But there are some ways that we could raise a little bit of revenue and at well, least help a little with some of this stuff. But where, where does your revenue go? Uh, Does it go in revolving fund. accounts or it goes in the general fund? In the general fund. General then, fund. Then, then, we order then, pizza. Yeah. 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 It doesn't go yeah. back in. But it goes into it next year's part part revenue. It, yeah. revenue. Yeah. Budget, so becomes I mean, part of the part of the whole. Yeah. I mean, it's a little help. <laughs> it's probably not going to raise it a lot, but I mean, it would right. raise up how much you would get in next year, yeah. which goes against the entire budget. Right. Yeah. But it's what I can do to help. Yeah. You know. That's It'll leave your budget alone. Just thank you. think about it, Kara. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, Pat. Yeah. Okay. I may even have to back off of Carol at the library. You know what I mean? Because that wasn't a big budget either. No, it's it's not. And you're not going to make progress on these things. You're going to have... Well, we can't get the thank big you. giant budgets in here until we have more solid numbers. Yeah. Because now we're beating them up with some big numbers. And we don't know. Yeah. It's in its own Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Thank Good you. night. And last but certainly oh, not least. Oh, Mike. You've got 30 seconds. Awesome. I got hand up stuff, so. Oh. oh. I'm going to start that again. I already got it last week. We saw her. Oh, no, I had a, I'm not giving you a new one. Okay. Hmm? I think spring well, I'll take 60 that one. days. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. I'm ahead of everybody. There's, there's no way in the world. What's my budget I can't see it happening. No. No, actually, what I was going to require. Well, because it's enterprise. It send such so, a negative no disrespect, but you could cut $100,000 out of your budget, and it's not going to impact our budget. No, exactly. It's and that's, and that's going to cut your budget, and it's going to, you know, if you yeah. cut 100,000 expenses out, it's going to show another 100,000 to the good, but it's an enterprise account. Right. It'll go back in and could be used for other purposes, right. but um, unfortunately, we don't don't have the way to cut that budget. <laughs> if I wanted to cut that much money, I couldn't anyway. No, of because, course. I'm, I'm just throwing a number. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so what I presented to you tonight is uh, kind of just more, more information since our last meeting um, on Saturday. Um, kind of where we stay right now as of February 1st. Um, as noted prior, um, we've already had this conversation and George mentioned they're still putting receipts in. So I can't 100% balance the, the receipts, but I do keep a separate spreadsheet. Um, my deputy keeps a log, a journal log entry. Every time we send a deposit over to Town Hall for to get put into the ambulance fund, we keep copies of it, we track it. Um, so, um, so we're able to kind of do a projection of where we are right now, divided by how many weeks have gone through, multiply that by 52, that gives me my projection of where we might end up. Um, so currently the receipts for FY24, total that they're gonna come in over uh, what we brought in last year. Last year we brought in just over a million. We're gonna be probably about 45 to $50,000 more this year than last year. It's always a good thing to do, especially when we increase the budget. Um, Start balance of the fund was about, is two hundred fifty-four thousand dollars and change. It means that um, from what we have received received so far and projected out again, this is just projection, is that we'll have in the fund about one point three million dollars at the end of the year. Um, right now, expenditures are actually under where I had expended um, thought they were going to be for this year for both salary and operating. Um, we made some big increases to the salary due to rate. Uh, Preparing for some races, uh, as we discussed at the meeting on Saturday, um, we are not are the same as kind of the dispatch center, where we found that our pay rates have fallen behind industry standards. Uh, we're trying to get that back up, uh, but at the same time, we're trying to get that back up without blowing up the whole ambulance fund. So we're doing races throughout the year. So this past year, we did one on July 1st. We did another one on January 1st. 
with this uh, budget being approved, we have plans to do another raise on July 1st, and hopefully if the salary account is still in stable conditions, looking to do something else maybe next year. Again, trying to spread it over time, but to build our pay rates up to be competitive with other Are you doing uh, it providers. Like fair? Is it like all the same job, or is it based on seniority? So basically, the, all with the hourly pay rate is done as just a general pay rate. Uh, the only difference we have is between paramedics with experience and paramedics without. Okay. Um, paramedics with less than two years experience make about a dollar an hour less than paramedics with more than two years experience. But what we're finding is that the private AMS companies are able to increase their rates a lot more than we can because they're all, you know, profit, they have contracts, they have, you know, definite money. We only bring in money when we transport. So if we do 1,800 calls, but only transport 1,300 people, we're only by law allowed to bill the 1,300 people we transport. We can't bill anybody that we go to their house and say help them up off the floor or um, they refuse transport once they wake up if they pass out or something. So, and that's just unfortunately the way the, the law is written for Medicare, Medicaid, and the insurance providers. Um, but, so we're looking at that. So this year we're looking at, again, these numbers are very conservative for the turn back. They might actually be more, um, but especially with the um, operating budget, the operating budget, we have more. I mean, definitely, I think the salary budget would be more than what I'm projecting the turn back. Um, but, never know. We get some bad storms, I have to add a couple of crews, we have staffing issues, I have to add, I have to add you know, second crews because we're having a hard time capturing those second calls because we don't have uh, in staff avail in town staff availability because they're away on vacation, things of that nature. Um, so that's something we may have to look at, so that would impact that, which is why I went with such a conservative number for both those. But they, I'm expecting them both to be higher. So with this estimates that there will be um, roughly 1.372 uh, in the ambulance fund prior to transferring out the FY24 budget items. So and then on the next page is breakdown of uh, FY25. What I added in is that so this so you can see what the comparison is from what we took out for FY24 and what we're going to be taking out for FY25. So so you have that comparison. But in here is just what the FY25 budget is. Um, and again the operating account. We're doing a 3% increase to the operating account just because increased cost supplies, increased cost of equipment. Um, every time the state decides to change treatment protocols, there's some new piece of equipment or new medication that we have to carry that you know we have to make sure we're budgeted for. Um, we do have some new equipment going on the truck this year uh, for pediatrics, which again is a good thing, but costs money. And there are some things that we don't do as a service that requires um, some extra money being spent uh, that it's something that we should be looking to do. So, and it's not a lot of money. It's maybe like a thousand dollars here and there, but um, it will increase the abilities of us to provide the service to the community. So it's de definitely something worth putting in the money into. And then to say the salary count is broken down, even though it's not in the reporting, but on here is broken down for myself, my, uh, the deputy chief, um, and then other administration covers, we have two, two supervisors and an operations officer uh, who does come in, comes in and does office work. That covers their office hours while they're doing all their office work to make sure that we're meeting our goals. And then the BLS staff and the ALS staff, uh, you know, we just kind of just, we kind of split that a little bit, 55, 45 out of what's left over because that's about where it falls in. Um, we're gonna be transferring like we do every year, it's 14,000. I put utilities, but it's basically a fuel surcharge. We pay back to O&M uh, for the cost of fuel, for fuel in the trucks. And then um, the transfer for the ambulance purchase back to capital, because we borrowed the 100,000 when we uh, first right. yeah. brought A1 in. Um, we paid back 20 last year, we're gonna pay 20 back this year, and then for the next three years, so. Um, so at the end, the total EMS budget, um, Combined is a little bit over a million. Like I said, we're looking to bring in a little bit over a million, so it seems to be pretty close. So after transferring the safety, salary operating budgets along with the utilities and the ambulance repayments total, uh, it's estimated that there will be about $343,000 remaining in the ambulance fund as of July 1st, 2024, which is roughly an, almost a $90,000 increase from where we were when we started the fiscal 24 budget. Um, 
Wait, do you have no linen cost at all? You just get that when you go up to the ED and you... Sorry? No linens? You don't have to pay for any linen cost? Any... Like, you know, like the blankets or anything? No, nope. uh, we're, we're able to... Uh, most 100% uh, of our linen is transferable to hospital. So whenever yeah. we go to a hospital, it's a one-for-one -one exchange. Um, we have to... They I'm remind just surprised us there's no line item for it. Yeah, because we don't have to spend any cost on it. So because everything we do, we drop, we cause mm -hmm. basically we drop, take the line off the ambulance stretcher and give it to the hospital. They clean it and everything and put it back and recycle. We at both, actually at every hospital we go to, we have a EMS linen yeah. uh, cabinet or cart that we can grab stuff off of. So and they and they do that purpose. That's they they just mm -hmm. keep restocking and stuff. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they. I just know the cost of linen is like through the roof. Yeah, that. exactly. So, so that's they, they haven't pushed that off on us yet. Years ago, uh, we were able to get supplies uh, from hospitals without having to do requisition. We could just go in. They had a supply room. You'd go in, take the stuff out, restock your truck, leave. You're great. Um, years ago, um, hospital uh, the hospitals changed that um, and stated that no, 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 don't take the stuff out of our ER. Anything else, even though they bill for the IV that I did <laughs> so but um, some places are putting like vending machines in yes you have to like yep. put your code in take your vending take exactly there, there are a couple of hospitals that have that I've seen them around um, I want to say Good Samaritan is one that has it and stuff mm -hmm. but um they actually have a vending machine you have to put in your code you can take out what you want um I think it's more tracking than everything you also put in if you returned anything um Mm -hmm. We're looking for the hospital to work on a similar type of vending situation system for medications because mm -hmm. uh, right now we have to get all of our medications from the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. uh, for that reason, we keep a lot of, not a lot, but we keep a couple of meds, med a couple of each medication we carry back at the station locked up. Uh, the only thing we don't bring back are narcotics because those have to be double secured so we get those to the hospital. But we do that because the pharmacy is literally on the second floor on the other side of the building from where the ER is. Um, so it just takes some time, takes our truck out of service a lot longer. So we try to tell the guys, if you're using our car, <coughs> yes, you have to go build it. But if not, come back to the station, fill it back to the station. So, um, but that's, that's really all, all I have as far as that goes. I mean, like I said, we, the goal is to remain self-sufficient as long as humanly possible. Good news is with the receipts coming in the way they are, uh, we're still able to do that. And we're still able to do that with, uh, retaining staff and, uh, recruiting staff. We actually. Um, I'm looking for a couple of EMTs. We actually have three candidates that we are going to look to start going through the interview process and hopefully onboard them within the next month or so just to make sure we fill our numbers. We're having a daytime coverage is getting a little bit difficult, um, but we also have a couple of staff members that are in college and things. So during the summer, they're a lot, avail a lot more available, but we're working on that. I'm content with the EMS yeah. department. Self-supporting, it turns a small profit. They borrowed money from us, they paid it back. New Ambulance will be here shortly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, New Ambulance should be here by the end of this month. A1 should be here in service, I'm hoping by the first week of March. So we don't wait to get a follow from him. Um, and it's going to fit in the garage. Mm -hmm. And then we have to start looking at the next. As soon as that ambulance shows station. up, now I gotta start looking at the next ambulance. You're not getting a new station, so don't even go there. <laughs> no, the next ambulance. I hate to say, it. my catch-all is <coughs> I need a new station because my ambulance won't fit. Well, the next ambulance that we're gonna order is gonna be the twin to what we just have, so we'll definitely we'll fit the station. But it is still a little tight, but it'll fit. There's room in the back to add on, and there's a there bay, there's a bay to this side that goes all the way back. Just have to kick O and M out of it. Yeah, there's one that, that's where they store all the... The first unit. bay. That goes all the way to the end wall. Mm -hmm. So you could put a conventional F550 in there. Yeah. That would fit. Yeah. But yeah, we also there's also room off the back to build off the back side of it if we had to yeah. make a bigger bay. And then who knows, someday maybe they'll do something with the building out front. Mm -hmm. so, I appreciate it, Mike. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that work great for you? Oh, right on the road. I don't get any ideas. It's been, it's been a few times. It's been a few times we've pulled out from back here. It's like dodging cars coming in. It's like we're trying to get out. So, but I don't think it's a terrible idea. But I think they would need a major rehab, and that's the problem. Yeah. You have to tear down the police station, then add something onto the back of the fire station in order to make it work. Because the setup in there right now is not conducive to 
and uh, uh, offices and overnight yeah. lodging to staff 24 7 it was never a staffed station yeah so no, I'd say we've, we've walked through that area and you'd stuff. Have to do the it. second you'd, floor. Yeah, get, granted, the check, get the checkbook go. Yeah, it hasn't been maintained. And the second floor is definitely does not have the square footage to exactly. to, 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 to handle something to that nature. So while it may look good, uh, we could always have the you know the, the EMS guy sleep in the old jail cells. I suppose there's already you know beds in there. They're already there. All you got to do is make the door. Right? Yeah, and you got your own bathroom. What more do you want? There you go. So. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Good, Good to see you. Yeah, really. I'm so sorry to keep you guys so late tonight, Bob. Uh, George, uh, is there anything you guys want to add? Is there anything you want to help us out with? Do, do any other final thoughts? John Carter, do you have any thoughts? Since you've been a willing participant tonight to sit there quietly. Uh, Certainly would like nothing better than to hear what your thoughts are on it because obviously everybody knows John, right? Yeah, I, I feel your frustration. I think that we're going to be living with some of these uh, cost issues where we've got a report for 2013 sitting over here in soft right. We've got budgets in Excel. We've got actuals in VADAR. And I just think that we need to get someone with maybe an Excel background, you can you can take the 2013 out of a PDF, put it into an Excel, and we get a temp to come in, and we just have them hand key in the 24 budget, 25 budget, VADAR. Just get you one sheet of paper that gives you the cost, so you can see what happened. I go back and get 20. I think 22 was on the 23 final as well, so you'll have a nice run of costs. So at least you can look at your costs and decide where you think you might have some. I room. think you can migrate soft right into uh, Excel. So yeah. all you'd have to I, import I, manually be VADAR we, information. So I believe we did in the past, but I was told by the prior finance director wouldn't do it anymore. Because she didn't know nothing about exactly. Excel. Exactly. So, so I think that um, I think that's the start. Otherwise, we'll have these meetings, asking questions about line items, not knowing what the history was. We have to look at revenue and make sure that that's ironed down, so we know that. You know, I would just tell people if we got a four percent increase in revenue, if you haven't looked at their budgets, try to stay within four percent of last year's budget and just see if they make their own cuts versus coming here and, yeah. you know, having you guys grill them. This is rough. They're the experts. Let them do their own budget right. cuts. Exactly. What do you think about that, George? You think that's uh, Bob? Do you think that's some? Thank you, John. You think that's something we can look into and try to get that spreadsheet going? We have some people I know for a fact in this building that are wizards at Excel. Can probably get a you know an eighth grader from the high school. It's also probably a wizard at Excel. Well, you know, why don't you go up to the mic? So. The older stuff, like soft right, will migrate. That I think is it's possible to maybe download that into it. It, it make it, it on its own. It'll do it. Okay, I think you will turn it into Excel. Maybe as Bob, as John said. Um, you might be able to get that. It's the, the one that's got me is it's the beta piece. Yeah. I just I, I don't know what you can do with that, but Oh, I'd like to tell you what you could do. Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, it's, uh, I think there's a few of us that would yeah, tell you what to yeah. do. It's uh, that's that's the, the thing. List. But it might give you at least if you had twenty three and uh twenty two that might, you know, kinda of give you an, an idea of, of, of where it's better than, than nothing, okay? And then Maybe we can plunge through the 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 the, the, uh, the twenty four in, in, in you know even if it's messed up and kind of try to plug it in. Thanks again, Mike. Thank you. Good night, Mike. I I think we always did get it in Excel. I think they always dumped it down. It's like yeah. a data dump and these. Yeah. Uh, always from Excel. Well, I know that there were spreadsheets. And I'm not going to belabor this because we've seen it ourselves. John Carter caught it as well as I did. We had Excel spreadsheets that had been pre-formulated. Yeah. So there was information that was put in and then the following year was there was a formula in a cell that said if that's what it was this year, this is what it becomes this year. And it was all, it would go year to year to year to year to year and then all of a sudden with no names mentioned, yeah, no. we started seeing, if you clicked on the number, you didn't see the formula anymore. You saw that it was a overridden, it was a manually inputted number. Yeah. So whatever the formula had been for the last five years in this particular spreadsheet, all of a sudden now became a number that we 
stuck in there. We overrode the formula to put that number in. Yeah, yeah like they used to be, I know, are you talking about the 10 year forecast, that one I like? Yeah, there used to be like a cell in there that had 200,000 of revenue and then you could see it coming out in the That's expenses. That's right, and, and it all calculated. Yeah, the one third, one third, one third on yeah. all of the, yeah, you know, all, right. all of that pilot money. And we probably got spoiled with those reports, but the fact is they were very complete, they were very simplistic, they were very easy to understand, mm -hmm. Uh, and given the fact that, you know, I'm not a rocket scientist, it worked very well for me. Right. Um, I just, I'm trying to find a way to... Cobble it together. To make this work going forward. I think, I think that Mr. Carter is 100% right, and this is the perfect solution, is to get this stuff put onto a spreadsheet so we can try to sit back and talk intelligently, and then let the department heads come up with the best case scenario for their department. You know, I, I have little doubt that the town clerk facing an election year, and Pat's right, we're, we're going to beat her up over what, $200? We're looking for $240,000. We're going to feel better tonight going on because we saved 200 bucks. I, 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 I just don't understand it. I just think we need to 100% like iron out that percentage in what's above the line and below the line because the school needs to also figure out their budget. Oh yeah, the school's got to figure it out. And if we don't give them the right out. number, they're going to be cutting at the end. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have no idea where the school can possibly, possibly cut $700,000 or $800,000 if they have to. I spoke with Old Colony today. We are down to 79 students. We lost 11. So while our Old Colony contribution is not going to go up this year, uh, I did not get a number. I should have a number of Wednesday, so the next FinCon meeting I'll have some old colony information. Oh, that's surprising. Yeah. I am very surprised at that. Very and, and, surprising. Um, I was told that a Kushnet went up 26 kids, so there's going to be one heck of an old colony increase for a Kushnet this year. Kush Kushnet doesn't number. have their own high school, though. Right. 26 more and, kids, and, and we got 11 they, they we send, lost. They send more to old colony than anybody, and then the rest of the kids that don't go to the Vogue school, they tuition them out. Yeah. To surrounding towns, high schools. Yep. If you if you get that, that would be good because that's one of the the. Um, I was working on this afternoon, but we got off of it. But I was working on a, a chit list of uh, things that we don't look like. We don't have the health insurance. Right. It's a it's a educated guess based on right. on that we don't have the old colony uh, yet. The, the, yeah, the whole thing. You don't, I you should have a better idea on Wednesday, uh, and then they're starting their budget season anyhow. But they typically run a very very tight ship over there, so usually yeah. whatever they come up with it's good. Uh, is going to be good. But uh, I got the heads up today. We we got seventy nine kids in the system down from ninety one. Yeah. There's so that should be a, that should be a reduction. So we don't have health insurance numbers yet. The health insurance is a, is we plugged it in and it was based on the treasurer and uh, Ron at the school. Yeah. Got the people who were currently in you know there are you know I'm making up the number 26 people in PPO over here is 50 people in uh, the HMO blue or whatever. And then we took seven and a half percent on that, and it went up. Okay, so you got you got the percent. So Gateway gave you the percentage, right? No, we don't. We don't have the Gateway percentage it's yet. High. So huh? You yeah. think it'll go up seven and a half? Not five. We we, well, we went high, and, and hopefully, well, you know, maybe it'll be lower or, or whatever. But th that's that's what we use really? for seven and a half. That's high. Yeah, we have a board meeting next week, so yeah. we're gonna see what what the latest numbers are. So if that were to come back at, at, at just for giggles and grades, if it came back at 5%, it would probably what save kind of a dollar. savings are we looking yeah. at? Well, I mean, oh, it's like about $5 million. Yeah. So every... So coming 2.5% of $5 million? Right, something to that effect. Yeah, it would be, you know, so that, yeah. that would get that, you know, I mean, is it going to wipe out a whole 1.1? No, it no. might be a few hundred grand or something, yeah. you know. And it would be, on the other hand, well, no. Let's hope to God it doesn't, it doesn't go up. Go up. Nine, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, because you, you you don't know, but it, 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 it's possible. And until you've got it, I mean, it, it, as they say, I'd always rather err on the cautious side. Sure. Uh, but you know, it would be nice. That that is that's the, the look. You, you guys have had uh, 
a pretty good run. So I don't want to say, oh, you're doing everything wrong. The problem, the only problem that, 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 that you have is we your town meeting is so early. Even if everything was going good, a lot of these numbers are hard to solidify. Like I wouldn't get some of these numbers in other towns for yeah. you know a, a few more months or whatever. You know, as as we're going along, and it, it, it just so it only adds to the yeah. to the pressure. It's, now I'm not I'm not saying hey, you know, your town meeting is wrong or anything, but it be just. We, we, that, you know? we, we used to have town meeting in June. You remember, John? And somebody decided to change it to April. Well, don't know why. Didn't they? Sorry. Huh? <laughs> well, you. I believe, I believe it got changed to April because it would keep the select board. They put the budget together at town meeting. If the select board membership changed, you got a new select board member. He's at well, the June town meeting. It had nothing to do with the budget being presented because he wasn't a member yeah. of the select board. But, well, but I mean, it's not. Personally, it's I could care less. I think that should be as you know late as it can possibly get away with being, so we get a solid budget. There are certain things that, like, like I said, even the. I, I mean, I'm probably being redundant, but I mean, even your your state numbers. I know they're supposed to be in at a certain time. I, I no. think I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, hey, we don't get them. Damn it! You know, I've seen it with you getting them in August. You know, I, I mean, I, when you finally get them. Neck breaks solid. You know, we, we, we mean, used to, we used to see them better years ago, but. Um, you know that I'll just end with um, there's not really anything that I can vote for as far as you know what we're doing with the well, budget or anything but I will vote but I would vote for pushing town meeting out to June well that's the so, guy over there you gotta so, so that's gonna be my next question so, so, that, so that we can so that we can stand, Janet, stand in front stand in front of a few hundred people at town town meeting right? and have some have some confidence and then they can have confidence in what they're voting in chairman's never going to go for it good luck tell you what you call him tomorrow who the chairman is never going to go for oh, it. i'll speak to him tomorrow <laughs> i was an hour of the phone today good luck <laughs> uh, i'm going to let you go george okay. i think that you have right. over and above your duty yeah. tonight thank good you well. very very much good. for coming in thank you i hope please and i mean this sincerely i know i speak for the entire Finance Committee. None of the comments tonight are directed at you. I said this to you. I said this to you that Saturday also. Um, I think you've come in and, and done a stellar job for someone who walked through the door and had no idea what the hell was going on here. I really mean that. No, I, I appreciate uh, And I think that Bob, Mr. Fennessy, was taken advantage of before because he put his trust in individuals that perhaps should not have had so much of that trust. And I'm glad the cameras are still rolling, because I don't care. Uh, and, I, and I think I that... I my that, trust into George. <laughs> I, think that, I think that, Bob, Bob you've done yeah, a great now, job. Yeah, for now, we'll be debating no, that. You've done a great... You've answered every question that I've had, and I know your frustration level is what it is. Um, but yeah, none, of this, none of this is personal. No, no, no. I, uh, I, I, it's I, just I, frustrating for us, because yeah. we don't, we're not used to being the... The, the, the tough fincom of, you know, the fire and brimstone, you've got to cut your budget. That's just really never, we haven't had to do that. No. I, I've been through years of, of budget cuts here and there with various towns I worked for, but 99% of the time, uh, wherever I was, we were on top. I mean, you know, it, it, it was just simply a reality, and, and that's what I think the thing that's adding to the to the fear and the frustration is is that when you can't get your heat you feel out of control and i don't think i've ever quite felt um like this in any, any no. venue i've been in i think that's the, I I think you hit yeah. the nail right on the head right. you feel out of control it's right. the, un and, the unknown right yeah. and then then you even when you think you've got something then you have to say well can i really trust what i'm looking at and, or is this going there to be is. something yeah. you know but I think the only thing that I'll, I'll end with, because I think what he's probably as tired as I am, but at, at this point, is that at least from the revenue side, okay, that the, I'm utilizing the same, uh, uh, what do I want to call it, uh, program that I've been using for years, and revenues are historically they they are a. They're a commodity that you have to guess on to begin with, okay? 
So I think other than for your local receipts, okay, because it would be nice to have at least six months in now so you can say how are we trending at this point. But I think that that the the, the what we're doing with it is what what I would have done, I'm, I'm doing the same in, in another town. And, and I'm doing the same in three towns right now. And I was using it in Foxborough. So at least the projection point is, it's a projection and, and, and you gotta do, it, it would be nice to have those, you know, like to say, hey, wait a minute, we're way off or we're, or we're running ahead, so we're in probably good shape, okay? That's the only thing really missing on the revenue projection at the moment. And uh, the other part would be nice, to, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a nightmare trying to get through to, to look at some of the, the, the expenses are there, but they're all littered with other things. George, how many days a week do you work for Carver? Right now, I've been doing between two and three. Uh, uh, I mean, most weeks it's been three, but this week I've got to go do a presentation, the same type of thing that we did on, on that Saturday oh, yeah. for, for Bay Haven on Wednesday. So um, the only difference is is that, that, they, that as we're doing it, we're utilizing that. But there's a confidence because, they, by the way, they're using Bay over there. Oh, okay. And, um, there may, I, I don't want to say something on TV, but there may be somebody over there that, that has offered because they they are able to get what they need out of it. it, it, it they, you know, there's things that are yeah are wrong, but they there are there's a few people over there that know they've been using it for years. I don't know whether I can make get that note, Bob. Or, or not. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> I don't know whether I can get them over here or not, but they, they kind of offered it up, you know, because I was telling them, like, you know, geez, I, you know, we can't even get this. And, you know, that, you know, they may come over and say, well, gee, this wasn't set up properly, so I can't do it. <coughs> That's what I'm thinking yeah. is going to happen. Yeah. Right, but I mean, it might be, you know, just a, a, a different set of eyes for a couple of hours to say, well, you know, well, okay, well, if you did this. You know, uh, it might might help out a little bit. That'd be a good idea. And they're friendly with a couple of. Well, people. you missed the meeting on Saturday, but John Neal is convinced that we don't even have the latest version. Oh, jeez, really? He he's oh, using the only highly yeah. technical uh, stuff, which I wouldn't even repeat. But he, he I mean, he, he he like you know, and I don't want to be like on TV talk about the, but in other words, there, it, it's it's an older type of program, I guess, is, is, is what it is. It's, it's working off of a, some type of a platform that's, that isn't what all the others are working off of right now. That's the best I could. Well, that's he the did best. that on mm -hmm. TV on the Saturday. You should watch that meeting when the, uh, right. when the IT guy gets up. So there's only so much you can do with it. Right. But the people that I know that are working with it know how to make it work to its, its limit, limit charge. Yeah. It's like you get someone who's exceptionally well versed in Excel, you're one of those people. You can make Excel do stuff that right. I could only dream of. Yeah. Right. Because that is an, it, it, I mean, you can make a career out of nothing but Excel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's that, yeah. you know, that involved. Right. But uh, unfortunately, all, and I won't put it on to anybody, but when you're using these, municipal accounting platforms. Even the, the so-called, I, I, there's never one that anybody has, has said, oh, this works perfect. Everybody's on No, you're right. Right, yeah. but, but unlike Excel, like you could probably go up to, to, to board, uh, uh, not Borders, uh, what is it there, that, um, Barnes & Noble, and pick yourself up or go on Amazon and pick yourself up 150 books, okay, on how to use Excel. Oh, yeah. Right? Try to get a, an instruction manual on any of the platform, Munis, software. Right. You won't. You won't. It's, it's basically... It's all proprietary learn. software. You're absolutely right. And, and that's, that's another problem. So I think when you guys... I'm not saying you guys, but I mean when the town put this in at the time, there was also got to have to have been a, a learning thing with it. And I think everything got muddled. It, it, everything came to a, a grinding halt, and I don't think there was a lot of training 
which would have been hard even if everything was going good. And I think the maybe the the, the person that, that had the most knowledge, the, the um, what do you call it, the institutional memory of how to work this program is gone. And so you just kind of got left and everything stagnated. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. George, see. thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, George. Bob, well, thank you. Bob. And, uh, we John. have no minutes tonight. Um, we will have minutes at the next meeting for the last meeting. Um, and we'll have probably tonight's minutes also. There is, I have no other 48-hour uh, stuff. Any comments from the committee? I'll take a motion. Let's make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. Thank you.